Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night, uh, six thirty, and we are live. Hello, everybody, on Hi. the show. Hi. Hello. 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 I haven't been talking to him for the last ten minutes, so uh, was Just there anything abusing you? Oh, was there anything cool you were talking about? Anything fun? Just talking about what the the, the random facial expressions you were pulling and like poses. You were doing a bit of this, a bit was of the I... thinker going on, yeah. I've been doing that all day at work. I've been like kind of, <laughs> and then I look at myself, I catch myself in some reflection, and I just suddenly go, "I look like I'm really bored." <laughs> I'm not saying I was or not. I'll keep that to myself. Yeah. Um, yes. Hello, everybody. Anyway, um, today's show is about game characters. As those of you who have watched us before will know, we are uh, four guys just love games, and we're uh, we're talking about. Game development, games, uh, the game industry, or anything, anything that comes up. Uh, said today's subject is game characters, so we are. Uh, we, again, we've got a, a pretty short list today, haven't we? Not that I would short. Say. I mean, it's, it's pretty three long. pages long. It's still two and a half sides of A4. <laughs> well, all right. I, I reduced the font on the copy I've got. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's more here so... than there was for gaming moments, I think. From what I'm really? Thinking. I think I suppose... it's a longer list. Okay, okay. I haven't put as much down as I normally do. No, I haven't either. But I think me. I think Sam has kind of brought brought up the uh, <laughs> brought up his uh, yeah yeah he's up the ante with it. Good, good. Which is good. Well, I think we've, there's a quite. There's, I've put a few in there that I imagine almost would have put like I put you know well we'll get to it in a bit but I put some stuff from Portal that I thought everyone was going to put anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just before we start, then, uh, as I do every week, quick parental advisory. Um, we do swear a little bit on this show, so if you are easily offended, then turn off now. Um, on top of that as well, we um, we do tend to kind of spoil things a little bit in games. So any of the games that we do talk about, <coughs> again, if you are if you don't want anything spoiled for you, we'll we'll try to you know tell you when we're going to say something that's. Uh, like major spoiler for a game. Usually after we spoil it. Usually after we spoil it, but you know, if you if you're a, a regular viewer, then um, you'll 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 already know that. We'll, um, yeah, we'll be careful about stuff that's new. We won't spoil the the, the the ending of a brand new title or anything like that. But basically, <laughs> you know, if we tell you that Darth Vader is actually Luke's father, and you get a spoiler <laughs> from that, <laughs> then sort off back to 1973 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 1979, I think it was. Yeah, but you're going to go before that, haven't you? Oh. <laughs> or by so, six years. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, why not? Specifically 70? by six years. That's the perfect age to watch The Empire Strikes Back at six <laughs> years is, old. It is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, on top of the uh, on top of the uh, things I've just said, we also have two other shows that we do Mondays and Wednesdays. We're not so sure we'll be doing something next Monday yet. Um, we normally, at the moment, we're playing through Metal Gear Solid One, and Lou is well, Lou and Steve are both uh, sitting and criticising my playing whilst probably not being able to play it as well themselves. And also um, oh, empty my wallet every time you get killed as well. Oh yes, and also yeah. Lou is donating to charity every time I die and I think we're on £11 so far. £11 Breaking English pounds. Breaking the ban bank, isn't it? <laughs> that's like that's like $18 or yeah, something. But given, it's given ridiculous. The, yeah, but given you, you've got like about 150 hours worth of gameplay ahead of you from games that you haven't <laughs> completed or played... <laughs> yeah, there is I don't that as fancy well. my chances to be honest. No, but as I, as as I said before, I'll uh, I'll chip in if uh, if I go too far. So that's my incentive not to die, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, on top of the uh, on Fridays we do a co-op show. Uh, we've been playing Planet Explorers recently, but I don't think we're going to be playing that this week. It's likely if we can get it all working and hooked up properly, we might be playing Gears of War maybe this week. Hopefully, I think, yeah. I think we've all got it. Have we all we all got it, Lou? Um. Lou's going to borrow my copy, I think. Yes, because Steve's What about your copy? Oh, right. Okay, so it's me and Lou playing yeah. Gears of War. Yeah. There we go, see? Working it out online. Working it live. Professionalism. So, onto the subject. Yeah. Well, has anyone been playing anything this week? Uh, yes. Yes, I have as well. You go first, Chris. Um, well, I've, I've actually finished off Dragon Age. No, no, not Dragon Age. <laughs> Shadowrun Dragonfall. I finished it this week, early on uh, this weekend, and I've actually got a few of the characters and that to talk about today because it's a very story-based game. You know, it's like uh, even though it's all text, there's no voiceovers. You can't really see the characters. It's all isometric and quite far away from them. But it's um, the characters are really quite strong in it. I think 
Um, and if you, if, again, if you like that kind of role-playing environment, it, it's kind of like a modern um, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like a, a futuristic steam uh, cyberpunk future uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, I'll go into that in a little bit. What about you, Sam? Um, I've been playing also a game, well, it's an add-on to a game that I've put a character down for. I've been playing the part two of the Burial at Sea DLC for Bioshock Infinite. Oh, I right. actually only started playing it today, actually. I've only done about an hour on it. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting, yeah. Um, everybody obviously already knows what Bioshock Infinite is, I'm imagining. The DLC, yeah. both the DLC chapters, the, the one-player story chapters, put you in um, in Rapture, in one, right. of the, in one of Elizabeth's kind of tear scenarios as it were so you're there just before the events of the first Bioshock game so just just before everything really goes to hell um, I don't really want to say much more about it story wise than that but that's basically what I've been playing this week that's relevant to what we're going to talk about shortly. So cool. is that Bioshock Infinite DLC? Yeah. yeah but it's set in Rapture so it's it's the infinite characters Elizabeth and um, Booker hmm. but they're in, they're in Rapture uh, and there's a reason and all that sort of stuff. I did, I, I have, I did know that it was out I just couldn't remember Mm. Which which one it was for that 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 DLC? I actually started playing the uh, the anniversary edition of Fable that was released last week. All right. Um, until obviously my hard drive decided to die. Right. <coughs> so I've, I have clocked a few hours on it, and um, well, I really enjoyed playing it on when it first came out on the console. It's and uh, the original Fable is it? It is the original. It's it's obviously been done up. Uh, yeah. There doesn't appear to be any additional content to it apart from like a few more weapons and items of uh, armor and things like that but I actually really ate well I have been up until the point where when my PC died been enjoying playing back through it again which mm. it's kind of pissed me off a little bit because Fable 2 is not available for PC and Bioshock it never will be but Fable 3 is weird, uh, That's I've, weird. Got, I've got Fable 1 2 uh, uh, oh, and possibly 3 on the 360 I've got all of them for the 360 and I've got another one, um, not Fable Anniversary, that's Fable something else, Legends or something the like that. The Journey or something, or uh, Lost Chapters. That's it, yeah, I've got yeah. that on PC, I don't know why, I think it was free, oh, it was cheap on a Humble Bundle or something, you know. Um, I, I, again, intend to play that at some point. So is that, is the first Fable 10 years old now, is that the Anniversary Edition? It is, yeah. Crazy. It's, it's a little bit disturbing that it's actually been 10 years. We're old, we are old. <gasps> Fuck in my day! I remember when it was all pixels. <laughs> and pixels were made of wood. Yeah. As far as the eye could see, which was about 12 inches. I remember when wood didn't even exist. And it Sorry. was low resolution. And yeah. we got whipped. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Let's get on to the actual subject then, unless yep. anyone else has played any games this I week. I haven't I think. played anything. No, I'm I'm probably not going to get to play many games for a, at least three or four months now. So uh, I'm just going to. This is why I'm playing the games with you guys on uh, oh. Mondays, and, Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> so yeah, apart from apart from Metal Gear Solid, of course, which I've been playing a fair amount of. Get okay. on our get on our YouTube channel and watch our uh, watch our let's plays and uh, watch me die millions of times and watch all the technical problems that we've had and <laughs> yeah. to re <laughs> replay and moments. And 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 <laughs> watch Chris fight the yellow cloud man who throws the yellow cloud orbs <laughs> of death <God>. around. <laughs> so it, it would be much easier if we just used a, a, a console rather than an emulator, I think. But, you know, we learned, we like lessons learned. You can get it on the PS3, on, but then you're then, you then buying the game again, aren't you? So. Metal Gear Solid 1? You can download it on the PlayStation Network, yeah. Oh right, okay. Um, no. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't got it. I haven't actually. I've, I've lost it. I think I sent all of you guys a text at some point uh, about a year ago asking if you had my copy, including a few of my other friends that I might have lent it to. Just still don't know where it is. I've even set the wife on it, and she's got no idea. She she can usually find things that I can't. Anyway, yeah. let's, let's get on the subject. Let's do it. <clears throat> Who wants to go first? Anybody chomping at the bit, or why don't you two guys get the obvious thing out of the way? <laughs> While we're talking about it, <laughs> yeah. All right then, let's talk about possibly one of my. I think Sam put this down, but I I can easily uh, say that this is one of my favourite characters of all time for many many reasons. Um, Solid Snake. Yay! Yeah. Yay! From the original Metal Gear Solid. 
Yeah, well, there's lots of different versions of him, obviously, because he's, he's had graphical upgrades like a lot of long-running characters. But, uh, yeah, just, again, for nostalgia purposes, the first exposure that most people that are into the Metal Gear Solid series will have had will be this right here. Yeah. Now, what I what I personally like about Solid Snake it's is supposed that, to be muscles. Uh, no, it's a sneaking suit. It's supposed to be, like, tight and that. Nah, they're not he, his muscles. He's not. Like I was going to say he's got he? muscles everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's in pretty good things. shape, but not that ridiculous. Yeah, I think that's just like um, like Batman's suit, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think the Tim Burton Batman suit. Does he have nipples? He's got muscles on his nipples. <laughs> no, 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 not the not Joel Schumacher Batman. Tim Burton Batman. Thank ah, you. right. Okay. Um, what I what I like about Snake is that he is he's pretty cold at the same time as as having quite high morals, you know. Mm. Um, but ambiguous morals, you know. He's he's obviously he's a trained killer. <clears throat> he's a trained killer, and he's no problem snapping people's necks. He's no people, ch you know, no problem choking hundreds of soldiers in order to get to his objective. But he's always talking about like the like the political situation. He's always trying to do, I suppose, what the the right thing. Mm. Yeah, he's he's. Yeah, he's got a good moral centre, I think, that you kind of don't really see um, from the first Metal Gear Solid. It doesn't really come out until a bit way into the game because you start off thinking of him as just being a killer. But you can sort of, you, you always have the choice of if you want to kill people or not, which again became quite common in a lot of games. Well, all, lots of different games of different genres do that now. But Metal Gear Solid is one of the ones where you started to say, well, you know, think about what you're doing, think about killing people, and Snake just reflects on that, and there's scenes later in the game where Liquid is talking to him about what he's done and the people that he's killed, and Snake gets really angry about it, uh, the fact that he he's just tells him that he enjoys killing people, and Snake's like, no, I don't. Um, plus, he's got, like, quite a sort of, what I would call, like, a laconic sort of charm to him, like, he's not, he's not the most... Um, charismatic character in the world like overtly or anything but he is just quite a cool geezer at the same time he sort of just takes it all on the chin and he doesn't yeah. go too over the top but the only time he really shows proper emotion is when he gets really angry usually involving the death of someone that he cares about but most of the time he's quite sort of cool and collected and got himself together and he's he's in control of what he's doing even if he's yeah. being manipulated by people above him is in the moment he's got control over himself is that a common theme throughout many of these characters then? Just a sense that they're very cool, they're very calm, collected. They're not phased by the situation that they're in. Because you tend not to really like characters that are very phased by the situation that they're in. It depends how they're implemented mm. though, because if they're, if they're silly and they overreact and you can't relate to them, then that, that makes them a weak character. That makes them, and you're like, I don't want to see that. I want to see a hero, or I want to. See, and that's why all protagonists tend to be that gruff, blokey man that you know has kind of perpetuated throughout many, many years of of media, all kinds of media, not just games, obviously film and everything else. It's perpetuated this this manly kind of in control character, and. Mm. And I'm not saying you can't have that as a woman, and by any stretch of the imagination, I'm just saying that that's that tends to be why I think most characters are you know, male characters are. Hang on, most protagonists are males. Yeah. It, well, they, they behave the way that that we we wish that we would behave in a tough situation. They're sort of like cool. They're like, right, let's just get on with it. We need to do something. We're going to do this, and we're going to see it through. Loads of heroes are like that. Um, all again across all media, and it's like. It's a slight wish fulfillment fantasy for us as an audience because we're a bit like, I wish I could be that guy in that situation that I could handle it that well. Yeah. And we know that most of us wouldn't. Yeah. 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 I said, and as, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of characters that I like that are like you know like that that they can handle themselves and don't kind of. So does a weakness. good protagonist kind of? Is it necessary to have a bit of admiration then? Well, from so, our side, as in yeah, we have yeah. to admire them. Um, no, I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it's it's good to have that, I think, as the player. But then um, again, I've, I'm mm. trying to think of a... There's quite a few, um, and I've not really... This is not some of that I've put into the document or thought about, but there's quite a few protagonists um, in films and games where actually you, you really don't admire them. In fact, by the, there's a lot of things that have twist endings where you find out the protagonist is actually the villain. Um, mm. Silent Hill 2 is one of those where you sort of find out that uh, that the lead character that you've been playing as 
is kind of the bad guy or he's, he's fighting his own demons to do with his path and he's not an actual admirable or upstanding person but he is still the protagonist yeah it's, it, it's also like the, the Grand Theft Auto series isn't it so you're playing what is ostensibly a bad character yeah um, and doing really bad things well, that's the thing. I was I, again. I put CJ into uh, from San Andreas into the uh, into the document mainly because I loved the character. I thought he was a brilliant guy to play. I, I, that's why. That's one of the main reasons that I loved San Andreas over any of the others. Me um, too. Because of CJ, because he's brilliant. He's he just runs around and shouts obscenities at people, and it's something that I don't aspire to ever be like, you know. And the fact that he's he doesn't give a, a flying fuck about anything it's like <laughs> <laughs> such a build up that you just swear anyway I'm to think of another word but it wouldn't come out <laughs> yeah he's he's quite likable this is why I consider CJ to be better than Nico because Nico has the whole like in the old country we had to do things I will be different here and then it's like and yeah, then he, yeah, yeah. it's GTA mate you know what I'm going to do I'm going to drive around the, the, the street oozing people out of my window of my Ferrari because it's GTA whereas Nico had the whole torture bit whereas CJ was like a little bit self-aware. He would run around and you'd shoot people. If you were like, at the end of the game, you can get the really smart suit and he'd be like, I'm a well-dressed maniac because you're like yeah. sorry people to death. You know, it was funny. It had a, it knew what it was, I think. I think I, I, I really didn't jive with, uh, with the CGI or with um, the game. I think mainly because I couldn't feel, I couldn't feel a sense of attachment to the character. Where, whereas I felt like that Rockstar took a big, um, big risk, um, which, paid off for the fans of the the paid off for the people who liked it but for the people who didn't it really alienated them which is why the characters in the later games went back a bit um mm. nickel was a little bit more of an everyman um and then by grand theft auto 5 it was basically let's have three different characters so you can at least associate with one of them yeah mm. well they have to you have to basically the whole purpose of trevor in grand theft auto 5 was to be the character that most players actually behave like like if you want <laughs> yeah. to be the crazy rampaging person trevor's your man uh, yeah they kind the other of two characters, did that the other two characters are, are pretty terrible people as well i mean i like i really liked franklin uh, he was my favorite i think out of well yeah franklin was my favorite because he was the most like the audience he was the most level-headed out of yeah. them all, I think, but he also was one crazy ass. You know, he was, he was absolutely mental at the same time when he needed to be. But, yeah, yeah. It, I, I think it's you. So to answer your question, Steve, absolutely not. <laughs> no, you don't need to have have a connection with him. You just be. Able, yeah, is there possibly a, a, an element of of living vicariously through it? I think for some people, maybe, but possibly I'm, for a game I'm, like the characters that I kind of. The characters that I enjoy playing more, so the characters that I would ultimately like my would kind of almost like to see myself becoming or being in some alternative reality. Yeah. Mm. And well, um, the same as Lou, I didn't really get away with San Andreas. Um, I couldn't connect to CJ at all. Um, Maybe it's because me and Sam like rap music. It's because <laughs> you're both black. It's because yeah. yeah. it's because it's me and Chris. <laughs> Oh, Chris and I, we're not racist, and you guys obviously are. <laughs> yeah, <but> obviously, that's... <laughs> you went there. If you, if you dislike a black protagonist, you're racist, basically. <laughs> you might just said that I liked, um, I liked Franklin. <laughs> I'm, I'm clearly just joking. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> don't don't clearly. start getting all defensive, <laughs> Lou. Considering Lou's of mixed race as well, I think he's the least who needs to defend himself. And I'm the first to say there's a lot to dislike about CJ, if you want to. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Well, there's a lot to dislike about a lot of characters in games, you know? I mean, you, you I, I, someone's put down um, Dante from Devil May Cry. As a bad character. Like, I, did, I think he's shit. He's now, a terrible <laughs> character. Um, and I kind of did a, a, a brief version of why. Um, who else put it in there? Because there's two of us. I put it in there and somebody I'll else put did. it in there as well, Sam. Good. I'm glad someone agrees with me. I just put the introduction scene for him. Now, I, I, I was annoyed because... It has that thing with him where in this cutscene, you know, he, he, she sort of shoots him a million times to list off and then in the game, you can't <laughs> withstand that kind of punishment. So there was that disconnect. But it's just everything about him, his stupid hair, his <laughs> attitude, <laughs> his douchey like red yeah. leather trench coat and all that stuff. It just the game, the first game was genuinely a really good fun game, but he was an asshole from beginning I, to end. I have, I have to disagree. I, again, that game, it's like a hack and slash, isn't it, basically? And that's the yeah, kind yeah. of... That and just mindlessly shooting people in FPS games are my worst kind of game these days. 
Interesting. There's, a, there's quite a lot of tactics to make cry, but anyway. But then again, I, I say that, but I really liked um, I really liked God of War. Mm. That is just hack and slash, but I liked the upgrade system and I liked I liked the character, even though he is a pretty nasty person in general. Yeah, he's another one of those characters. That actually, he started out quite good and became bad. But uh, my so my main problem with Dante as well is that he's he's very much a certain kind of cool. He's like a tick box of coolness. It's like, oh, he's got to have this, a, a coat on. He's got to have a certain kind of hairdo. Mm. He's yeah. got a safe he's kind of like The epitome like, of everything that's you know supposedly makes people cool, and it's just it's a horrible combination. It's the type of person well, it, that I would actively avoid if I knew him. It's a bad yeah, stereotype yes. as well. If, if, if you have too, if you tick too many of the boxes of cool, you stop being cool and become a douchebag. Yeah, mm. I think Eddie Izzard said it really well when he's like, "It's like a circle of cool, where you start start out at one end, and you just go like, you go cool, cool, hip and groovy, you get around to the side, and it's like, no, you're a dickhead. If you go too <laughs> far around the cool circle, you become a dickhead." <laughs> Dante did that. Yeah, um, I, I I said I wasn't a fan of the game in general. I didn't really play it enough to to know his character. I can't even remember. Is this the intro sequence? Yeah, basically to the, to the, the first big sword game. sticking out of him. <laughs> Yep. Yes, I, just, I know. I didn't. I can't even remember this. Uh, you're not missing much from a character like point of view. Is he a, games were is he a vampire or something? No, he's just a guy who's a dick. He's half demon. He's that, <laughs> I he's that say, you can't just be a guy. He's just pulled a sword out of him. He's half yeah, demon. That's the type of douchey demon. thing he does. It's <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Cool. Here, here's a sword. Yeah. He's too cool <laughs> to die for being impaled on his own sword. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, there's there's a crap story like his dad was some, <laughs> was a demon but a good demon who fought the bad demons and his mum was a human and here he is and his brother's like him but a baddie and he's called okay. Chill. and it doesn't really matter the story's crap anyway <laughs> it's Fair a cap, it's a Capcom game the stories are always rubbish in Capcom games you don't play them for the story um, now someone someone has put um, Kratos down as bad from God of War now, when you say bad, are you referring to the character as being a badly implemented character, or bad as in he is evil? No, as in badly implemented. I, um, I was really torn on this. Um, when I first played Gears of uh, when I first played uh, God of War, I quite liked Kratos. But the first then, game, you mean? Yeah, but then yeah. as Gears of War, uh, Gears of War. <laughs> <laughs> as God of War uh, 2 and 3 and that rolled out I just kind of thought it, it, along the same sort of vein as Dante is like could you be any more of a generic hard man you know Yeah. and it, it's there's, there's nothing likeable about the guy no I agree in I the know. first one you felt a bit sorry for him because obviously the story went through and you know his family dying and him wanting to avenge them and he kind of thought yeah that's something I could possibly relate to and then he yes. just went on a bit of a power, like hungry <laughs> march. Because so I, I want to be God, and then he kills God, then he kills another God, and you just think, yeah. "Come on, like give it a break." I can't remember where yeah. I heard this, but I heard someone else mention this, and it, it said they said that it basically got to a situation situation where it was, "What things can we think of so that we can get uh, Kratos to kill people?" Yeah, it, 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 it just got senseless. And I agree that Kratos became a bad character, but he wasn't in the first God of War. The first God of War. If you were to just sort of cut off the sequels and put that as a standalone thing, yeah, he it's would actually be really, character. really great. Yeah, he's a good. He's got a good backstory to him. He's got a good motivation for everything that he's doing. Even yeah. when he's being a complete arsehole in that game, it kind of makes sense. But then what they didn't keep was the good motivation, but they kept the arsehole super <laughs> yeah. aggressive behavior. Like he's so extremely aggressive in every situation with zero thought about any other tactical way forward. Uh, and in the first game, you kind of get it because that's what Ares made him into. That's what Ares wanted, and he's kind of <laughs> he, he is called the God of War. I mean, that does say something about his character. Yeah, I know that, but it's it, after like three games, and these games are sort of like fifteen hours long each. You get tired of it, and in the first game, it's the only one when it really made sense. I completely agree. Mm. Yeah. So that's a problem with Kratos. Started out as a cool character and became just a merciless. Shit storm of death was completely not relatable. <laughs> you kind of feel like, especially in God of War three, I kind of almost hope that he lost because you keep killing yeah. these gods and the world gets worse because the gods are maintaining the order of nature. And each one you kill makes the world get a little bit worse. You didn't hope enough though, did you? Because you didn't put the controller down. No, obviously not. So that 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 is that is the ultimate role playing, saying no. You know what? I don't like you enough, so I'm going to stop playing. 
I know, we <laughs> kept on playing, hoping that something bad was going to happen to him. That's not good <laughs> enough. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Just start killing him. Obviously, it's it's a game that would be really terrible on the part of the developer. Was it, it? Uh, <laughs> was it the second one where the Titans were involved? Yeah, second and third, but the second one's where they. I really, really liked the Titans, and I didn't want to kill them. Yeah. And it like felt like there wasn't a good reason to do so either. No, no, there, there was just no <clears throat> no reason why you wouldn't, why you had to kill these things that had been alive, you know, like millennia, and yeah. like Sam said, had kind of do contribute toward the balance of power within the world. And you just man, you just go in there senselessly killing things, just but for the sake were, of it. Were the Titans the ones that the, the huge things that you could climb up or something, or is that yes. a specific? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't it? It sounds like they're just doing exactly the same thing as what um, Shadow of the Colossus did. Yeah. Making you mm. fight giant innocent things. But Shadow of the Colossus did it in a in such a in an arty way. I in, think. A, in yeah. a more elegant and sophisticated way, and it wasn't. I mean, the, the voice actor who does Kratos does what he does very well, but it's all on one level. It's all Ares, I will, da -da, da -da, da -da, <laughs> like, for like hours and hours and hours of everything. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's all that one level of just 100% anger and aggression. Yeah. And it does get a little bit... It wears you out a little bit as well. Yeah. yeah. I think um, a, another character that had a similar arc um, is Garrett from the Thief series. Hmm. Now, the, the old Thief games are really, really old games, but Garrett in it was... Um, he wasn't a silent protagonist. He had a lot to say. And it was hmm. usually quite funny and quite... Um, witty, the stuff that he came out with. He, he was always kind of cracking jokes, and he he had this sort of um, this this sort of carefree attitude to to life. And then in the most recent one, Thief, just Thief, that's what it's called. They turned him into Batman. They basically turned him into a broody asshole. All he was all he was doing was talking in his gravelly voice about how the world's terrible and how people shouldn't be doing this and. It's like, for God's sake, lighten up. He used to be such a cool character. I used to really like you. And now you're just a shitty Batman clone. I think that is also um, elevated by the fact that the game is not very good either. The gameplay is a bit repetitive. It is. It, it, it's, it's such a disappointment. I was really looking forward to that. But, you know, the first three Thief games, Garrett was excellent. Even um, in Deadly Shadows, which is a very berated member of the Thief family, I thought mm. it was quite a good game. And it still had Garrett's sort of sense of humour and wisecracking. But what I don't I don't understand why they just turned him into Batman. Batman it's, is Batman. It's a little bit of an issue in a lot of popular um culture is when you have one character who becomes this massive powerhouse of not only popularity but critical acclaim as well. Remember that in Batman in terms of his pop culture, you've got the Nolan films, but also the Arkham Asylum games. Yeah. Now both of those are critically and commercially very, very successful. So now lots of people are doing that. Let's make a bit of a broody, gravelly voiced, hiding in the shadows, yeah. Batman type character. And yeah, it's like we've already got Batman. Can we have something else, please? Yeah, it just demonstrates zero knowledge of what made the other games so good. And it wasn't just the fact that it was a stealth game that was well implemented. It was because it had a great character that you liked to play as. Mm. <laughs> That's well, a shame. Zombies that, are I, amazing. I've heard that the, 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 those first three Thief games, or at least the first one or whatever, is very, first very highly regarded. Are, yeah, two is the probably the best in the series in terms of um, just just all out gameplay and storyline and and voice acting and everything is just just excellent. Am really I correct in thinking that you could do a could you do like no kill runs of that as well? You had to pretty much. You couldn't really fight. Um, if you try, if you got into a sword fight with a guard, you'd pretty much be killed. So you had a mm. blackjack, so you'd knock people out, yeah. and then to be on the floor snoring like in Dishonored. Cool. I, yeah, it, it is a very cool game. But the character, the the character that you play as, you enjoy playing as him because it makes you feel like you're a witty, wisecracking master thief. Mm. Whereas the the new Thief game makes you feel like you're you're a kind of steampunk rip off Batman. And who wants to be a steampunk rip off Batman? Seriously. Batman. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fair point. I guess like I said before it's like it's it's a bit of a problem across a lot of different types of media. Lots of games and films are, are doing that Batman thing, and it's a little bit tiresome. Uh, yeah. Especially like you said, but it's already a character that's already been established. That makes it even worse. It's like, you know what? You didn't have to change him. All you had to do was update it. You didn't have to change. I don't know anything about Garrett, but obviously he's good enough that he didn't need changing, right? Yeah, he was, he was perfect. I mean, he was a unique character. 
he actually had a sense of humour. Mm. Um, and there's not many characters in games that have a sense of humour. Um, Duke Nukem probably is... Uh, Let's say the, the big guy with that. One, one of the, one, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that uh, by Chris's facial expression there that he's got Duke Nukem ready to talk about. Or assume, yeah, something. assume that if I've got something up, then it's going to get shown. So. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, uh, he's showed it now. <laughs> Duke, Duke to me, uh, the original Duke, um, as a like a 90s gamer... 90s FPS gamer specifically, he was he was amazing. You know, I was I was a I was a quite a bit younger, and it was like, oh my god, Mint, he's got some really cool quotes. Then I kind of realised after a while that he stole all the quotes from other places. I didn't know that when I played the game originally. Yeah. Um, and you know, it kind of lost a little bit. But then, like, they were obviously they were talking about releasing uh, Duke Nukem Forever. Not forever. Duke Nukem Forever was it? Forever? For it, and it took forever for them <laughs> it to make it. Did take hey! forever. <laughs> I'll be um, here all week. I think I think everybody on the planet's done that joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. But they the released Duke Nukem Forever, and you know what? I think they released it with exactly the same humour, but it didn't work for some reason, and I don't yeah. really know why. Because it was exactly the same. That it was all toilet humour. It was all ridiculous. But the, it, uh, did the game let it down? It was why? the same. It was the same humour, but they weren't allowed to steal blatantly steal lines from really great movies and because yeah. they weren't allowed to do that they basically had to come up with their own crappier lines and it showed and from what i've seen of it as well mm. there's, there's obviously like a, a line of uh, like misogyny in the duke nukin stuff but it seems to be from what i've seen of forever it seems <clears> to be much worse in that one or it, it, it doesn't sit it doesn't sit right well it also doesn't it. it doesn't wash well these days either no, it's an, it's a different era, and also you've got an aged audience now. Uh, from when the original Duke Nukem was released, everyone is now like twenty years older. Yeah, and yeah. I I mean I don't find that funny anymore. I, I played it. You know, the, the only thing that I found funny was the fact that, and I say funny, and I I say it with my tongue tongue in cheek, um, the the bit where you you can pick poo up out the toilet. <laughs> I thought that I thought that was daft. I did it, and I did not expect it to happen, and I laughed. And that's the only real thing that I laughed at, and the fact that I could draw a, a big pink cock on the the whiteboard, like I think everybody who passed the whiteboard did. Keep it high, bro, Chris. That, that's the thing. And but the it's beginning, sophisticated humour for you, isn't it? The intro sequence was just offensive. I think. I can't remember anything about that. It, it, the it intro was, sequence. It was basically getting a um, a blowjob. Yeah, from two twins who were just vacuous. I think I remember it. You know, yeah. and I mean that was. Yeah. That was just offensive. I mean, that, I mean that, that's where it becomes self-parody, isn't it? That's where they, cl cl they clearly knew that people were expecting that, so they had to ramp it no, up I where they were taking the piss out themselves. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting... I mean, the worst that happens in Duke Nukem 3D that, I, that I'm aware of, I'm, I think I've completed it, but I don't remember it off the top of my head, <laughs> is that you can, you can give the strippers money, and they'll, they'll I think they'll do that. Tassels they? there's, there's, there's implied um, shenanigans uh, at the yeah, end of the game. Why not leave it implied? Yeah, I don't yeah. need to. I don't need to see. I, I know we didn't see it, but you know, I don't. I don't need. It was to... implied. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still the same thing. I think it's just it there was heads bobbing up and down in front of your crotch. Well, <laughs> this would give you a I very fine that. inspection. I, actually, I, can't... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember any of that to be honest. The, um, the, I, I think I, there were. Um... Sorry, go on. I, I've just got this hole in my head where Duke Nukem Forever was played. I remember the last level I played where I was on a dam getting killed by some stupid monster and I thought, uh, you know what, I'm not enjoying this at all. I'm just going to stop playing it. I was going to say, it, I think, on the, to defend the developers slightly, I think they had a little bit of a case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if yeah. they had not done any of that stuff, everyone would have gone, well, it's not Duke Nukem anymore. Where's the, oh, the no, lowbrow no, no. sort of sexist humour? But yeah. then if they did it the way they did it, everyone was like, oh, this is lowbrow sexist humour. So... They, they kind of were in a losing situation in terms of that. Anyway, they had to do Duke Nukem as Duke Nukem, but then the issue becomes, was Duke Nukem something that people wanted to do in 2012 and not in, what, 1996 when this came out or whatever it was? Yeah. I think if they if they had brought it out when they said they were originally going to bring it out, it might have been a different yeah different thing. Duke Nukem uh, Forever was always doomed to fail, given the release when it well, was. Well, it was. I mean, yeah. to the point where another company had to finish it off with all the bits that were left over from the 3D Realms team who just kind of abandoned it. Yeah. That's George Broussard run out of money. Well, um, let's quickly talk about... It's a bit of a segue from characters specifically, but let's talk about silent protagonists. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this, I tend to play games. I tend to enjoy the games the most 
when my character is basically shuts the hell up. I, I like to inhabit the character, and I think there's a, a sense of immersion breaking when your character starts to talk and do things. That's why I think the Half-Life intro works so well, because you are you are Gordon Freeman. Mm. Um, but saying that, when you play um, Deus Ex, you're not silent in that, but... No, you, but you do but you form have your own character. You do, yeah. But I think games like Quake and Doom, um, I think they come from a time where it was the only way you could do it. They didn't have writers. You know, someone will sketch down on a piece of notepaper, right? There's a guy with a gun who has to kill demons. That well, was a story, of- for, story for Doom, a story for Quake. There is actually a story for Quake. The, the Quake character was an actual character, but just disappeared. You end up fighting Shub Niggurath at the end. I think the... What was the story of Quake? Uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head. Quake was meant to be um, a, a, a trans-dimensional um, demigod who had a giant hammer, which was Quake, and he could hit the hammer and cause earthquakes. Um, mm. And you were meant to fight against him, or the game was about you defeating him or something, but didn't happen. Just stuck with the name. All right, fair enough. I didn't know that. That's you actually went trivia. into Lovecraftian mythology, which is why you, you fight Cthulhu. and uh, It's not Cthulhu, is it? Cthon. Um, and Shub Niggurath, who are all. I think I think you may have pronounced that different to everybody else on the planet. Then probably which is yeah. what I normally do. Cthon, C- C- I don't C- know. Cthulhu, Cthulhu, everyone. Cthulhu, C- C- well, I don't know. It's not. It's not him anyway. There's, there's a fair few different spellings of it as well, I believe, and different yeah. myths as well. So anyway, but the, yeah, it's it's basically some kind of Lovecraftian thing meets some kind of cyberpunky. But Gothic in the same thing. in the same vein as silent protagonists, we've also got protagonists as you just mentioned, Deus Ex, um, protagonists that you can kind of form your own personality with. Not so much games that like Deus Ex where you've got um, you've got choices. You know that just kind of that kind of just makes you know the game play out slightly differently. But games like um, I think games like Mass Effect possibly a, a little bit more in. D- developing, so you're developing the character in the direction that you want to take them. You're still within constraints, but they are quite wide constraints, I think. Yeah, Deus Ex, I mean, Deus Ex does probably very similar in terms of um, how Mass Effect does it, and it gives you very distinctive choices to make at many points in the game, yeah. which influence the whole game. Um, it, it's really nicely done like that because it. <laughs> Although it does, it is it is giving you a dialogue tree at the end of the day. You have to select which one you agree with. The choices are really well thought out in most cases. Yeah, and I said um, that they are well thought out. But I mean, are we ever going to get to a point with games where they you can like literally make your own character apart from you know with with dialogue? Hang on, that came out totally wrong. <laughs> if I'm thinking of games like Skyrim. It's silent. You you don't talk. You you you're your own person. You've made your own character. You've made your own name. You you make your own future in that game. Obviously, you can do that with no dialogue. But do you reckon they could ever extrapolate that out into a, you know, here's a story. But I don't know. I'm I'm. But it's in like a computer game that could pass the Turing test. Yeah, I suppose. I think possibly. that would. Be, I think that's a big ask. I think to 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 have a game j- dynamically generate an interesting, compelling story means that the computer would have to understand what a compelling, interesting story is. Yeah, have to, I don't yeah, think be it creative. Could do it. And the whole point of stories is that they're told by people who are good at telling stories. When I when I played through Mass Effect, though, I did feel quite immersed in it, and I did feel quite like I was Shepard because of the the decisions I was making. Were, were decisions I would make, you know. I made I made all decisions that I would make, and I didn't feel at any point, oh, there's not a there's not an option there that I can't I wouldn't want to choose. You know, I'd, there wasn't like six options, and all six were oh no, I'm not interested. You know, yeah, but the mass oh, effect I mean, options are generally them. kind of like it's a good op, it's a good like reply, a, a a bad reply, or like a middle of the road reply, and then obviously when you develop your skills further, you get to go like very good or very bad, like renegade, yeah, yeah. Aragon. Mm. So you're really only making a decision, whether it be bad or good. Yes, that's true. I think there is a bit more... Yeah, as, as you go on through the game, you get a little bit more of the middle ground option. Plus, it's a case of you can mix up in what situations you decide to do the um, the more altruistic thing or which ones you decide to be more selfish. That's mm. how you form... The, you might encounter one guy who 
gives you a bit of attitude. So you you know you might have a renegade option to punch him in the face, but you might generally be playing a good character, so you can dip into that side of him. But yeah, yeah they are they are they are still more or less binary choices each time. But you can make different binary choices depending on context that kind of gives your character yeah. a bit of depth. I think. In I mean, there's a lot of games that follow that uh, that same kind of formula. Like Fable, for example. Mm. Although there is no dialogue in the game, um, like people do react differently to you depending on whether you're a good character or a bad character. But again, the choices are like Sam said, quite binary. It's either you go in and you help the guards, you know. Um, with a transport, or you go in and help the bandits capture the transport. Uh, yeah, you're still doing the same thing in a way, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. just it's a, it's almost either like side a, of the coin. Yeah, it's an extreme version of what you do in real life, isn't it? Because in, in a game, you feel compelled to reach a goal, and if that goal is to be the best character in the world, so that you walk through any town and everyone claps and cheers at you, or you mm. want to be the worst character in the world, you want to walk out of town and everyone runs away from you screaming. You never want to be middle of the road because you feel like you haven't accomplished anything. Mm. I think I think they need to do something about that. I um, think there should that, the, that that should the, be within scope. There should be there should be rewards for being, I, I think, being middle of the road. I think there are in Mass Effect. Yeah. Isn't, there, isn't there a neutral uh, perk? I mean, no, uh, Fallout 3, there's a neutral perk. You can get in that where if you have nu- neutral karma, so you're not positive or negative, you get different perks for that too. You're right, you do, you're right. That's yeah. the only game that I can think of that's actually rewarded rewarded you for being neutral. As for games that give you the chance to not be entirely good or bad, um, the Walking Dead games, the Telltale ones, are both quite good for that. Again, it's about what I said before. You make choices depending on which people you want to help and which people you don't want to help. And yeah. that makes your character not entirely good or bad. There is there is an element to that. But after playing through those games, I did kind of realise that the choices don't make that much difference. They they don't make a difference to the to the narrative, but they make a difference to the character. Yeah. To the central character. Um, have you played through second season where you play as Clementine? I haven't yet. I mean, I, I did know that you play as Clementine, but thanks for spoiling that. It's pretty. <laughs> I thought it was He's pretty got common knowledge. Up, Chris, didn't you see? You what? Yeah. He's got his on. finger up. Look. Yeah, yeah. He's got his finger up. Something. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I've never played any of the um, the Walking Dead games. The Warming um, Dead. Sorry, cold <laughs> in it. <laughs> the, um, they're, um, they're currently working on a Borderlands Two um, thing, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Um, which I look Telltale. really interested in. Yeah. Have you played them, The Walking Dead, Slew? I haven't. No. I'm, I don't. I, I don't know if you'd like them or not. It is all story based. That that. In fact, the um. It's not much gameplay to be perfect. The, the gameplay is get. It gets worse and worse and worse the longer you play it. I say worse. It gets less interactive, and I don't mind that. Quite, if it's a good story, though. It's a brilliant story. It is a good story. You, you said to me before the, before the show that you don't really get involved with stories and characters. No, no, no. And... I, I don't. I don't tend to like characters specifically for their character. I tend to play a lot of games which don't have. Which I tend to play a lot of silent protagonist games. Mm. Yeah. Or games where I ignore what the characters say. I mean, for the first playthrough in Deus Ex, I pretty much ignored the story. I was just interested in being a super invisible ninja. That's, that's a fair enough. Again, that's what games are. You can do what you want with them. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and I think games that force cutscenes on you and force, you know, particular paths or decisions on you are, are, are bad games. Most yeah, of the but saying that, I mean, I, I, I love Final Fantasy VII to the point where I could happily play that game without having to do any fights, just to go through the story of that game. Well, yeah. Again, the, the argument there is that Final Fantasy VII. The, the battle system and the materia system I quite like, but it is a bone of contention for a lot of people, such as Sam, for example. He doesn't mm. like the uh, turn-based combat in that. Yeah, no, not really. It's a game that you could quite happily play with no battles. Oh, I'd like I like the big battles, but then you wouldn't have the practice no. for them. So yeah, it's uh, it's another catch twenty-two, isn't it? I think. I um I personally have I've so, I, I would say I generally prefer a, a character, you know protagonist who's got their own views on stuff but i definitely have a there's a place in my heart for the silent ones obviously i'm a fan of zelda games and link is more or less a blank avatar that you just play as yeah yeah um, well same really goes for mario doesn't it you know any of those yeah the Ninten- most of the nintendo characters are silent and or apart from making occasional huh! or Woo-hoo! noises oh, you know? it's a me, me mario, mario. <laughs> yeah um but Woo-hoo! since we're since we're playing the footage of it right now, I might as well talk a little bit about 
Clementine and Lee by extension. But the reason I picked Clementine over Lee is because in the first series, she's a bit younger. Um, and she's a kid character who they actually succeed in making you as a player care about and want to protect rather than feel like this is just a chore that I have to drag around because the game tells me to. Yeah. She's characterized nicely. She's, she's, you know, she's just a, just a nice kid and she's, she's quite innocent, obviously. And you I sort of feel like you want to look after her and she's quite likable. She's got a little bit of a sense of humor and she's I just thought- a cute kid. I totally found myself being on her side most of the time, and she wasn't an annoying kid. It like I got a lot of games have they yes. have a, a, either a child that's completely useless or, uh, but Clementine is a really interesting character and really, I said as you as you just said, I really wanted to look after her all the way through it. Yeah, and I felt, and I felt, unlike um, unlike, unlike the princess in Dishonored, who is an no. annoying little brat. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and one yes. one thing I will add to Clementine is that what they did very well in series two is when you play as as Clementine, you still feel that protective thing about her. So when you're playing as her and someone's asking her questions, you actually are very guarded and you're like, you know what, I'm looking after Clementine, I'm looking after number one. Like you feel like I'm looking after the- I'm looking after this 12 year old girl. You're playing as her, but you feel like you're looking after her as well. And it, you, if you've played mm. the first one into the second one, there's a very strong connection to the protagonist. I, I'm looking she's... forward to getting, I've got the yeah. second one, I'm looking forward to playing it. I don't, Please don't spoil anything. I'm not going to say more spoil than that. Things for everybody else. I'm not going to spoil <laughs> it. I'm just going to say that you, you you feel very that protective feeling comes even stronger when you're playing as her, which I really really like that they handled that very well. It seems to me like this this segues quite neatly into um, The Last of Us, which yeah. is a game that I've not played but I really want to, really She's, really want to. She doesn't come across to me. I, again, I haven't seen much of it yet. But she doesn't come across to me as a, a innocent child, or a no. From what I've, from what I've been, what I've, what I've read, um, apparently the two characters, the main characters, don't start out as friends. They no, start they, they, out not really liking each other. Yeah, I was tempted to upload the introduction video where li- you go into this room at the, near the start of the game and you meet Ellie. And she's like, "Who the fuck is this guy? The fuck you going with him?" And she's like being a total arsehole to Joel. And Joel's like, I don't want to take this kid around. I'm not going to do this. Like They both they have that sort of buddy cop thing where they're sort of like, yeah. what, I have to go with this guy? Sort of <laughs> attitude. Um, but then they, they have different motivations for why they're so guarded against each other. Like Joel, for his part, is, you know, <laughs> a, he's he's lived through this apocalypse. And like... Well, well there's a certain backstory to Joel as well that um, I know we can kind of see why he would be put off children. Yeah, there's a bit at the, the beginning of the game where you real you understand why he's like that, and he's very, very <laughs> closed off and cold. And he's yeah. like, you know what? I'm just out to survive. I'm not going to make any attachments to people because attachments just get you hurt or get you for, killed. For a and game Ellie, I don't want any spoilers for. I've got all three screens are playing it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a montage of clips from the game, so there's nothing really. Yeah, you can't really link intent- it. To anything. You can't really find out what the story is from this. this is the characters together, but Ellie's like, she's just, she's a, a kid who was born after the apocalypse, so she doesn't get all this stuff, and you're walking around and find things like a record store, or all this kind of stuff, and she's like, what's this? You know, she asks about the old world that was, yeah. and you, you sort of get to see him teaching her about it, and the, and he sort of falls in love with her as a surrogate daughter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's one of the good things about the story for me, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's a character development, how they develop together. It does, and actually, the, the way that they develop together informs massively on the narrative more so than the, the plot yeah. of humans versus the apocalypse. Their right, story you know is more important. That's it. That's it. That's it. Done. You don't Everyone say, dies, it, Chris. It, 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 this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is the kind of um, character that I really like, and it's kind of like um, in Half Life 2, Alex Vance. Yeah, she reminds because- me a lot of that. Fans. Yeah, you've got this, you've got this vacuous character that you're playing as. It's, ba- it's basically this this shell that you inhabit and control called Gordon Freeman, and then Alex comes along, and she is such a strong character. Um, in fact, a lot of the characters in Half Life Two are strong, but she is, I think, a groundbreaking character. I can't imagine. I can't think of any game previous to Half Life Two where the character was so impactful. I also thought I was when I first saw her. I thought she was pretty beautiful as well i'll be honest with you when i saw when i it was the again the the, the quality of the characters in that game when it was it the came face out. really the face is kind of it was a massive leap before the lip sync and um where the eyes followed you the expressions that they had as well when yeah. talking, little, it just I added remember, another human element to the character i remember watching a demo of um of it, well not a demo but a video of it released which showed g-man talking to you 
Yeah. Right, and it's yeah, like yeah. it comes right in on his face and you see the glisten in his eye and mm. oh, bloody hell, that is amazing. That her, that character now, she when when I think back at how she was, even though she was quite uh, the animation was uh, jolting, it was a little bit um cartoony in places. Not too much, but you know it I think I, I I don't know. I think that feel she feels more like a character than even some of the more modern games to me. Yeah, now. I think she, I, she I, was I, really I, well done. I've mentioned Alex to a few people, and everyone has the same opinion. Everyone fell in love with her. Basically, she mm. is a brilliant character. Um, she was and, a believable character as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, most people in that game were, though. I think, in my opinion, oh, yeah, they were. They're excellent. I love her design. Like uh, the fact that she is clearly an attractive woman, but she's not ridiculously attractive she's she's she feels real and mm. the, like the way that she has her hair and her clothes and that she's she's feminine and all but she's not hyper feminine she's not sexualized in any way no she's just no. A, she's just a normal real woman that, you, that is in this situation and i i love that about her and that, that is also her personality as well is like that and um, it's 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 beautiful i love the bit where you um you get the teleport working for the you get the teleporter working for the first time and she teleports over and you, you don't see her and you go, what, what's happening? And then she comes on the screen and mm. kisses her dad. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. such a sweet scene. It's like it, it's like you're just looking through a TV out of two real people. It's very weird. Yeah. It, it, it did so well with that game. Yeah. Kudos to Valve. For and she had a nice ass. And yes. um, whoever, for whoever that on a misogynistic <laughs> note. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know who the voice actress was that did it, but she did a very it was good job Jen, as well. So. It, it was Jen Taylor who did Cortana in Halo. All oh, right. Oh well, there same, you go. She's, same she's woman who does everything. <laughs> yeah, she's obviously a great actor. So yeah. Yeah. Not well, speaking. Speaking of women, why don't we talk about um, uh, Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite? I know we talked about Bioshock Infinite earlier, but we didn't talk about Elizabeth specifically, did we? No, we didn't. No, so who out of us has played that? I have. I've, I've played, half, played, have played about half of the game, or a quarter of the game or something, but I've um, got a bit Probably the same it. as Lou. Um, I started playing it on the 360, and then I bought a new PC, and I'd kind of just abandoned the 360. I do wow. really want to go back to it, because I've heard that the storyline towards the end is fantastic. It's you know what, I think the story and the characters are brilliant in this game, but I, I think the gameplay was seriously lacklustre in comparison to the other two games. See, it's strange you say that, because other people have said the opposite. They've said that this has the best gameplay, but the, the not the best story. I, I'm, you know what, I, mm. I'm i going to take that back a little bit, actually, thinking about the actual story of 1 and 2. It was amazing as well. I thought the story was better than the gameplay. That's... That's a fair thing for me yeah. to say, I think. I think um, there's a couple of choices they made, like having you only have two weapons at once, which felt like it didn't fit in this kind of game. So you had to keep shop swapping weapons out, things like that mm. marked my gameplay experience slightly. Um, from a gameplay point of view, just to, it, I thought it was on a par, if slightly different from. Um, God, the, I just remembered the ending. It is mental, isn't it? The ending is a, is a, is a head... Screw, don't don't spoil, like a, don't no, spoil. No, no, we're not going to. It's all right. We're not going to tell anything else. I'm just spoil. saying it. It's it's good. It's worth playing to the end. Yeah, I've definitely. heard that. I've heard it's very um, well. But Elizabeth is another one of those characters as well. When especially this bit here with the, where if you guys are watching the video with her dancing, yeah. and there's a part if you like, she won't. She'll keep dancing until you interrupt her. And I, I, I I'm really soppy with games like this because I was watching it, and as a part of me, just like you know what, man, I'm happy to just let her keep dancing, like. Because you know, with it being a Bioshock game, that things are going to go really bad and grim, and you just like she looks, she looks so happy dancing. You're like, oh, <laughs> um, but she's that, she's got that about her in general, where you feel again, you feel a bit protective of her because she seems like an innocent. She's been kept in this room all her life, and she's very intelligent. She's read, you know, all those books in that library. She's super educated, but she's not of the world. She doesn't know what yeah, people like with each other, bit, the horrible things that people do. She's a little bit childish, but naive. Yeah, I think naive is the right way, but she she's not she's not stupid as well. I mean, she she just punched a guy in the nuts. Then she, I think she, yeah, she yeah. lives she lives in a library, <laughs> doesn't she? Yeah, uh, well, the yeah, first part well, of the game. And again, of. she um, has uh, quite a good progression. Her character becomes, you know, something to be quite a formidable force, um, and she changes as she goes along. But I won't say any more than that. Really. Yeah, is, I think we it, should uh, probably stop the video now if you haven't seen it. Yeah, is is this um. This feels very male centric. I mean, would would you say that there are any male characters in games that have this kind of effect on you? Like, like you know, like a, a sub character, um, a, a, an NPC who sticks you with th sticks with you through the whole game. I can't really think of any 
companions. No. Other than uh, remember, these female remember characters. The, remember the general target market of these games, though. It is targeted at yeah, yeah. mid thirties exactly. gamers. I'm again. I'm not. I'm not saying that that's right. I'm just saying that 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 is a fact. I think most of the time, you know. Yeah, um, it's some, it's true that there's not many um, games that have like a male companion where you have that same feeling of of a protective fatherly sort of feelings over as he will with the. It's quite easy to do it? with a female character. If you get a girl character who's a bit younger, you, it's sort of a natural thing for you to feel, I guess, in a in a violent situation. I don't know. Mm. In um, in, isn't it Call of Duty? There's a ca- the character in that um, who everyone likes. Price. Oh, uh, yeah. Captain Price. Price. Yeah, yeah he is the best is. character in it. He is. He, yeah. To be fair, I, th- I quite like the story in the earlier uh, Modern Warfare games, uh, Call of Duty games, and Modern Warfare. But yeah, Captain Price is a particularly badass. Uh, like, soldier. and he's got a huge mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone <laughs> he's, with facial hair is on my side immediately. But he's one of those people that, again, that he's like an even more male fantasy character than the, than you play as. So he's like the guy that your hero looks up to. He's that cool. That's what Captain Price is all about. He's just, you know, nails, isn't he, basically? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and he has strange, good isn't it? quips as well. It is very strange that they, they, they basically do have to take on these gender stereotypes in order to to sell the characters to the audience. Mm. It kind but of... What- it, you're thinking it from a female perspective. I, I, I know that there's a lot of um, a lot of girls really like the Final Fantasy series um, because <laughs> there are characters that do that for them. I think Final Fantasy X is it where that's a, like a really popular one with women because the all the characters are female or most of the characters are female and the strong female characters that they look up to in the same way that you've just been describing Captain Price is looked yeah. up to. I've not played uh, no, uh, ten. I've got it again. I uh, I've not played it either, but uh, but I, I, I've heard that that's the uh, situation with that game. There really aren't as many of those female characters, and I think that's a shame because this is something that again it doesn't just affect computer games; it affects all of our societal attitudes, our media, and everything about the, the gender differences between men and women yeah, and how they does. portray them, their roles within stuff. But I would I would happily play a game. Where you played as a strong female woman who had to look after a little boy would not be an issue for me. I, in fact, I would probably be interested in it because it'd be different from what I've done before. Mm. I would, I would buy that probably day one if it looked like a good game. I, I have no problem with that sort of role reversal. I, I'm with you there again. It's uh, to me, it's. I think a game has to be uh, interesting. A game can be interesting on many different levels to me, but I think a game that's based on characters and based on story. It doesn't matter. The sex doesn't matter to me as long oh, as they're no. good characters. It's like uh, let's, in fact, before we move on to the next game, let's uh, briefly talk about um, me and Lou's obsession with playing female characters <laughs> when we mm. play games. I, I tend, and most of the time, I will choose a female character, Same here. Um, and I don't know why. You know, if I've got like, for example, um, it's well, also I've the same you... reason you like a dress up on weekends. Yeah, <laughs> probably the same, roughly the same reason. Anyway, roughly. God, that's um, a cow- don't want to imagine Chris in a dress. Do you want to Come see? My, I've got a dress on now. Uh, a, a skirt. A skirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, a skirt's fine. It's a dress, a gingham dress with the like, pigtails and st- no, no. no. I was thinking more of like a tap at a ball gown. Ooh. Pigtails in my beard. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so um, I, when I played Mass Effect, every time I see a video online. Every single video that I've seen of Mass Effect has had Male Shepard in there. All different variations of Male Shepard. I played the entire series as Female Shepard, mm. and I made a, I made a female character that uh, that looked pretty badass. I'll be honest. She had scars and like. In fact, in, the, uh, in was it two or three when you had the scar and it's the weird scarring from the rebuilding process. But then it right. it, it, it recovers, doesn't it, over mm. over the, the period of the game? It depends um, whether you're Paragon or Renegade, whether it recovers or not. I think. Yes. Okay. Well, I obviously was Paragon because <laughs> I think that's the only time it does. Um, but yeah, I mean, I played that. I like when we used to play Quake Two. I was always a female character, even yeah. though that was that was very minor in comparison to choosing a female character with personality. Yeah. Um, I mean, Lou, the, the, Lou's got an opinion on on why we used to choose quick. Yeah, I think there's a psychological characters. thing. I think I think a lot of people picked uh, female characters one because the jumping sound was less annoying, but more two, they felt that this character was smaller and that there was a psychological edge that it was maybe perhaps people would hesitate just a little bit more if they were shooting out a female form than a male form. Mm. Um, I definitely think there's something to that. 
Um, that's possible. Pers- you know? mm. Yeah, I think I think that's, that's certainly the case where you're playing with a lot of. I mean, at the time, it was a lot of basically pubescent males. They maybe wouldn't instantly think to shoot a female character. Yeah, but the alternative is to try and hump you. <laughs> well, I can you deal know with what? That. You used to get a lot of attention. Doesn't get him a frag. And that sounds a bit weird. Um, my name was always Spiky as well. I don't know if that sounds male or female. I think it could be either, actually. Genuine. But um, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I used to get a fair amount of attention when I used to do it. Like, are you are you a girl? Or are you, uh, you know, asking weird questions? And it's like, no, mate, I'm I'm a boy. I just have a female avatar. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. Um, it does it again to me. I just chose it because at the time when I first initially set up my configuration files, I um. Uh, it it was because I thought that it was a smaller model. That was yeah. the only reason. Yeah, um, it's the same hitbox. I'll tell you why it does make a big difference, or at least it did, and it probably still does to a certain degree. Is massively multiplayer games. Right. Female, but if you play a female character in one of those, you are saying a lot more about yourself uh, than I just l- picked a smaller model. A lot of people uh, who do that do that so they get stuff given to them. And yep. I've heard that as a, uh, I've heard that from people who actually do that and they play, they play these games. Quite weird. Yeah, I, I did it never quest, and I got, I, I, I did it for an experiment to see how much more attention I picked, like a cute little dark elf female, and I got, I, I was getting given stuff at the first level. It's just like people would come up to me like high level characters and try to chat me up and stuff because at the time. Men played male characters and women played female characters in those games. There's very rarely a crossover. You know what? I, I when I play MMOs or when I used to play MMOs, I this is contrary to what I've just said. I play always played male. I did because the role play yeah, 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 male yeah, dwarf. Yeah, yeah, same same. Well, you were barbarian ever quest, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but I was a Nord or whatever they call them. Barbarian. Was it? Was that the race? <laughs> just the barbarian. Yeah. You are a barbarian, right? Yeah. Rubbish. You are an angry big man. You sure it wasn't Nords? No, it was Nords as a, a That's Skyrim. Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, when I play single player games, if I can, I usually choose a female. If it doesn't have a detrimental effect on the gameplay, which it norm, I mean. It shouldn't I think, do. I if any game did get... that, then they'd probably get yeah. <laughs> blasted That's off the exactly shelves. exactly what I was just about to say. Yeah, it's a bad, <laughs> bad choice, isn't it, for, uh, for a developer to do that. Um, anyway, on to. Let's talk about uh, an annoying female character, and I assume she's annoying. Annoying. Um, sorry, I af- I assume that she's a she. I'm not sure it actually actually says this in the game. Mm. Um, anyway, it's Navi from um, Zelda. Yeah, Ocarina of Time. Hey, listen, listen. Hey, hey, listen. Oh God, <laughs> I wish there was a fuck off button. Just, 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 just a big red button saying "fuck off." Yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what what this is. That's Tingle. I didn't put a, I didn't put a video up for Navi because I figured it was everybody knows what it is. It's just oh, a little blue, is, uh, a little blue is, dot with wings on. Tingle annoys me as well. That's why I put him in there. Oh, okay, sorry. No, I, I remember Navi more than um, Tingle, but I assume Tingle is uh, from the Wind Waker, possibly. Uh, yeah. He's in Majora's Mask as well. Ah, oh, um, right. Okay. But what yeah, is... Navi's just constantly. She's not even. She does all your combat stuff for you, and she's kind of like the little thing that goes around and talks for you. Like she's like, "Oh, this guy says this. This guy says that." You've been playing too long, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nintendo, just, I don't just think... stop telling me that I'm playing too long because I'm an adult and I can I can make that decision myself. But Nintendo's target audience is children, as I said no, before. No, it's not. It's <laughs> not children. They, they obviously have children to who you know who who play these games, but. The good enough games to play as an adult. They, like they, the president of Nintendo said the other month that they're now targeting hardcore gamers instead of the generic casual gamers. Hardcore yeah. gamers generally tend to be adolescents to adults. I've got to say, actually, at this point, while, while I'm watching this Zelda thing, I, I think most of the characters in Zelda can just, just do one. Yeah, they... they um, cool. What was the, um, the female helper called in uh, Twilight Princess? Oh, good question. She was really right, liked though. her. Yeah, she was actually quite good. No, yeah. What was she called? Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I do, I'm totally drawing a flag. That's annoying. Anyway. I know who you mean, yeah. though. Yeah, she was yeah. actually quite cool. I, was yeah. that the mid, Midder? Midi? Mid, Midner, I think. Midner, it Midner. Midner, that's it, yeah. Uh, was she the black one? The, one? the one who was quite big, who came out of your sword? Yeah, she was like a black and white thing that she... Yeah, she... Yeah. She used to ride on you when you were a wolf. 
I, I agree. Yeah. I did like her, weirdly. Okay, not all of the characters in Zelda can can do one. Just just most of them. Yeah, most the, Nintendo not... characters in general. Again, I don't I don't get I'd, why have a story if it's just boring, repetitive, the same as the last game. You know, just let us play it because we that's what we want. As well, me as a as a grown up gamer, I want to play Zelda. I don't want to press A through all the stuff constantly and get annoyed every time I open a chest, etc. And yeah, well, that's it. That's the Zelda in it. Yeah, unfortunately, um, there is one character now. I don't know if anybody else but me has played this game, and it, but since we're on Zelda, um, uh, a game called Akami. Uh, I haven't played it, but I saw you play it a lot, and I've I bought it off watching you play it. It's the best Zelda game that's not a Zelda game, and it actually has a lot of things. It does a lot of things that Zelda doesn't do. It does. <sighs> I don't know, what do I mean to say? It sort of does things that you wish Zelda did. It, like, it has better characters and things like that that actually you actually quite like and get into. And, um, I couldn't... I could, it's really hard to find good montage footage of Amaterasu, so this is just a lot of artwork. But, first of all, she's one of those characters where her gender isn't really important. She's a wolf goddess, but generally, basically gender neutral. Doesn't speak, but has a bit of a personality. Like, the little green thing you can see jumping off her head in that. There's a little sort of imp called Isun who does all the talking. He's like, oh, we're going to do this, that, and the other. Amaterasu doesn't ever say anything, but she has an attitude about things, and she will do stuff in, in cutscenes and dialogue scenes that you weren't expecting. Like, she'll just randomly grab someone and bite them because she senses something that we don't. So she's, right. like, a, she's like a blank avatar, but also not at the same time. Like, she kind of knows what's going on, but you don't know what she's thinking, even though you're playing as her. I, not I, to I, mention that her design is just... Like brilliant, she's a I brilliant admit, side I, character. I didn't once think uh, of character when I saw this game. I I thought of the gameplay looked interesting and unique, and that's it, what appeals to me. It do it is, but it's also one of those games that not a lot of people have played. And when we had an ex excuse me to pimp it a little bit, I thought, hey, why not? Because yeah, if you like if you like Zelda games, this is definitely the kind of game to play. It plays like Zelda. It has it's, a really lovely art style. Yeah, it's got well. a really really distinct art style and. That's po that's the point of the game, isn't it? A lot of it, you have to yeah. draw things to yeah. to get past things. And I, I don't know the specifics, but I know that there's a there's a brush involved. And yeah, you, you press to... like R one, and it brings up like a, a um, like a scroll of paper over the game screen, and then you paint things on that, and then that ha it affects the world what you paint. That's mm. one of your godly powers as Amaterasu that she can got a celestial brush, um, and she's just like it. She's just a, a nice, likable character, a bit like a Link type character, you know. Not not completely devoid of any personality, but, but but more or less a blank canvas for you to put your own stuff onto and have just have fun with the game. Um, I kind of like her mainly just because her design's so awesome. So, Dark Ages of Camelot, Lou. Jesus Christ. Yep. Where did you drag that one up from? Forgot entirely about that. Did you play that? Yeah. All right. So I can't remember you playing. I it. played. I played most MMOs, like the older ones. I've, I even played. Um, I played Lineage uh, Two. Yeah, I did as well. But I played Guild that for Wars. very, very, um, <laughs> for very non-feminist friendly reasons. I basically played it to stare at the Dark Elf sarsers a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I said what Lineage 2 specifically. I yeah. played it because a friend of mine, I think it may have been someone I used to work with, they, um, they started playing it and said, oh, you're into MMOs, come and have a go. I played it and I was like, this is really boring. What it's, is the point it's not a very game? good game, but it had great looking... Dark Elf female models. I even played um, Asheron's Call. I didn't play that. That was Microsoft, wasn't it? Um, yeah, maybe. Can't remember. I think it was. I think it was Microsoft's uh, answer to EverQuest. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Akami. I need, I need to play that, I think, at some point. It's, it's, <coughs> I think I do as well. It's on my list, and it's a very different type of game, too. It's it's 2D, isn't it, Look, uh, Sam? No, oh, it's 3D. Fully 3D. It, well, is it not isometric? Nope. Third-person oh, okay. camera control. Oh, um, I'm, mis I'm, I'm misremembering, if that's yeah, the right word. It's got certain sections that it goes 2D for, for effect. I will give you one warning about playing it, though. This is a bit of a bone of contention for me as well as other people. The characters, it's all tech stuff, but then the characters all have a sort of it, 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 it sort of noise that each one of them makes. A I little bit annoying. I remember walking into your bedroom once and hearing it, and I was like, mate, is that not annoying? <laughs> like, after about two seconds of hearing it. I mean, you heard that noise, and you actually walked into his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just me. Have you no shame? 
yeah, just um, uh, just a bit of a warning. You get you get over it quite quick, quickly, <laughs> but it, you think is this going to be for the whole game, and then it is, but you kind of just get on with it. Anyway, right. Um, there was one that I, I while we're talking about, we've talked about a good character for a while. So I'm going to talk about a game I've just recently been playing with the wife, uh, Dead Island. Uh, I said just recently. I, I've been playing for quite a while now. Anyway, Dead Island, um, the original. <laughs> Not Riptide, which is a... I've got that as well. I'm going to play that soon. All of the characters in it, they're supposed to be just trying to get off this island. Uh, literally, the story does not matter. It's... it's Every character is just annoying and vacuous and just all stereotypes. There's a black guy in it that's coming up, and he is a black guy. You know, he's like the, the blackest black guy you'll ever meet. <laughs> Yo, homie! You know, it's like, oh, mate, come on. Get, give, give us, <laughs> no give one us is break. that black. You know, he's... he's <laughs> He's not even in this scene, for God's sake. But I, I actually picked the black guy because he was... Uh, you can choose one of four or five characters, I think. And I chose the black guy because he was... Um, he what? was like a, a heavy weapons, like blunt weapons expert. Oh, right, and so I, there's just the classes as well, is there? Yeah, kind of. And you, right. you've, got a, you've got upgrade trees to go in it. But basically, I mean, like that girl there, uh, she loses her dad, which is that guy there. I'm not... Believe me, I don't even care if I'm spoiling things because guys don't even bother. Skip all the cutscenes; it's just. It rubbish. looks like it looks like Vass from um from uh yeah, Far yeah, Cry Three is in yeah. the background. He's one of the characters you can play. Um, I, I'll talk about him later, but he's a, he's a brilliant character. He is a very. In fact, I've totally forgot about him, but yeah, he is a brilliant character. But anyway, she loses her dad, and then she just becomes this whining, moany emo cow. But the, you know what? The most annoying thing. <laughs> An emo cow. You know what the most annoying thing in, in the entire game is? Is that all you do is do jobs for other people. Nobody in the game moves or helps themselves or does anything. And you just walk around doing everything for everybody on the island. And it's so unbelievable. I mean, I'm enjoying it because, again, I'm playing with a wife and I don't get to play many games with the wife. But there's just something about the people in it that just make me want to murder everybody and, I, and that's well, it's a good thing we're in an island full of people to murder isn't it the amount of times i've tried to kick people in the face in it it's <laughs> uh, and it's not and they don't react they can't hit the actual npcs which is a bit annoying i think i think you should have that freedom especially on a game like this where it's a huge island and you can go into a city and jungle and other stuff as well i, th I think a, a comparable game would be left for dead and the characters in that are actually really well developed i think so, well yeah. certainly two of them are Bill um, and Francis are both quite good characters. I think Zoe and Lewis are both meant to be just generic male and generic female. But then with Bill, they kind of injected a bit more humour and he's kind of, he's seen it all. Um, he's the grizzled sort of um, ex-soldier. I think he's a soldier. Um, and then you've got Francis, who's just the kind of the, the miserable, I hate everything biker. And I think they're just they're just interesting characters, and they didn't have to create interesting characters for that game, even though the premise of the game is that it's a movie starring these four characters. Yeah. There's a few um, games that have done that. Like, and Borderlands feels a bit like that. It feels like it's a movie starring, but it's the way they introduce each of the characters at yeah. the beginning, I think, that does that. But but, but I don't think Borderlands, Borderlands' main characters are very good, although the um, the NPCs of the original characters from the previous game are excellent. The... Um, the <laughs> Like yeah. people like um like uh, Lilith and Mordecai. um Mark Marcus and stuff like that. Is it Marcus, not Marcus. I think Roland. I, I think Marcus. all of the characters in Borderlands uh, ha and Borderlands Two that you can play, I think they have a character. They have character, but their uh, visuals show most of the character, you know, and their introduction vi videos. Mm. That that in itself makes you feel like a bit of a badass when you actually start playing as them. Do you know what I mean? I'm, it's like yeah. the, you don't you don't really do much throughout the game with them with the characters, but at the beginning it, it's like right, this is going to be a cool action game. Yeah, and I'm going to really get into it. Yeah, and that, I like Clap. Let's talk about Claptrap as a character because oh. he's 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 <laughs> arguably <laughs> one of the stupidest like but awesome yeah. characters I've ever I've, I've ever seen personally. I, 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 I love him. I'm I dancing. Laugh at him. I'm dancing. I hate him, and I hate him. Be and the, the reason that I like that is because <clears> he's meant to hate him. They've yeah. actually succeeded. They, they've made a character you purposely you purposely hate for the right reasons, and I, that's I, genius. I utterly disagree. I don't hate him. I think uh, I love him. I think he, he's brilliant. He's, he's, he's annoying. So annoying. As hell. Yeah, he is so annoying. But he's meant to be annoying. And the player uh, play that up so much in Borderlands Two as well. 
Well, hey, yeah, in Borderlands 2, I, the, the dubstep bit make me, <laughs> made me howl. And I was whoop, 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 whoop. I, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I like the fact he's the comic relief and he, he also, you know, he kind of guides you a little bit, doesn't he? Uh, well, in a they're lot all of the coming. Oh, I'll tell you what, I mean, no one's mentioned him, but, but Handsome Jack in Borderlands 2. <gasps> What a oh brilliant character! Also, also probably one of my favourite characters. Why haven't I even? Why didn't I think of these? I don't know. Ones? I didn't think of him either. But Handsome he's Jack like, is he, hilarious. Handsome he's... Jack is amazing. Have you played Borderlands, Sam? I played the first one and really got quite bored of it quite quickly. I never the, played the, the game. second one. You, you were Borderlands. <coughs> hey! Oh, boom. God um, damn, we're pulling back in it today, aren't we? I, that's another I, quid you want of the charity, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's another I, can, I can agree. I can agree there, Sam. Uh, when I played it on my own, I played it through because I was kind. I, I wanted to see what the vault was. That was the only reason that I completed it. I got really, really bored of the gameplay. The second one, in my opinion, has a lot more character in terms. I mean, hands, honestly, if you if you even remotely liked the first one, even slightly. Definitely get the second one because it, the, the the handsome Jack, the whole um, story surrounding him. You keep picking up things and reading things about him and uh, it kind of bringing out his history without him actually saying anything. And the fact that he is the biggest asshole on the planet. He he's is he the villain? He's, yeah, he's, he's a, a villain. He's a villain. Yeah. Um, he's a villain, but he's he's probably one of the best villains in any game because he winds you up. He does things which are the the not. They're not the kind of typical baddie things. It's like he does it because he wants to annoy you and he wants to piss you off and he wants to wind you up. And he wants to... He, he, you feel like he really wants to hurt you. Like, you feel like he's really... He, really, he, he did, just likes you. Yeah. But he's really, I, really um, cutting and patronising as well, but at the same time, yeah. really um, sarcastic with it. Yeah. It's not necessarily he wants to physically hurt you. He wants to emotionally hurt you first. Yeah. He, right. and you don't he really get wants to you, dampen your spirits, and you, you know. don't you, you don't get that dimensionality from a lot of games or even a lot of movies. You just get like you know Sauron, the baddie who lives in his tower and wants the world to end so that he can, I don't know, sit on its yeah, ashes. Like, do but what? But handsome that. Jack has an agenda, and he really kind of pushes that agenda. And when you start to piss him off, he makes it personal, and you feel like he's making it personal for you. It's and you feel like he's you know, capable of well doing written. anything to you. I think if they got anybody else to do the voice acting, it wouldn't have worked. That guy was perfect for it. I can't remember yeah. his name now. I did. I, I did. I did a review on him, um, and I did quite a lot of research. And he's he's a fairly famous voice actor. You know, he's a fairly well known voice actor. Yeah. But he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant with it. Really. He, I don't know. I, re I I couldn't wait to meet him. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> like. I was, oh. In a way, like um, like the one line is in the humour and carried the personal attacks around me. Uh, so remind me a lot of Glados, especially in the yeah. second portal. Yeah, yeah, that kind of just and, like and the again, personal attacks, you know, like just specifically about you and trying to hurt <clears> you emotionally. Yeah, I'd play the audio because the audio really, really needs to be here for yes. this. I mean, you can you can read the the credits, but it doesn't really. Yeah, he, that's what it was. He, he gets a horse, doesn't he? Shoots it, but he calls it Butt Stallion. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's a. It's a. It's a unicorn made of diamonds. Oh yeah, yeah it's somewhat ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Called Butt Stallion. I like this uh, guy yeah. already. And he, the, the to, thing he... is, he's telling you about this while he's eating a packet of crisps over the microphone. Yeah, it's he's funny, just so munching he's just, away. He's just eating some, eating some crisps and telling you about how he's just got this uh, solid diamond uh, pony called Butt Stallion. It's brilliant. <laughs> so well done. I'm going to attempt to play it. Uh, I'm sorry if this has any. Uh, voiceovers on it. I don't think it will because I think it's just a. Yeah, this is, is a shot. bit, yeah. Yeah, we can't hear it, but I, I know the section. Yeah, probably not. I'll, uh, I'll watch it back later. <laughs> it's right at the start of the game as well. It's kind of his introduction. <laughs> is, so is, is he not in Borderlands cool. the first one? Is he just in No, he's not. No. There is no uh, there's, there is no antagonist in the original Borderlands, apart from the Vault, which isn't really an antagonist. No, it's just, no, it's just a MacGuffin, really, isn't it? The gold, I guess, the Vault. It's a rubbish MacGuffin as well, by the way. I should probably clarify the diamond horse. I've been telling you. Yeah, it's actually a sh it's a shame because I did really um. I really enjoyed the story, but I didn't actually get to hear it until about the third playthrough because I was playing on co-op. Say hello. Yeah. <laughs> Can you play the entire game co-op? 
Yeah. Yeah, we, we have them. done. <laughs> it's brilliant cooperation. I was well. going to call it piss for brains in memory of you, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you know that horse I was talking about. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a stuffed horse or anything. It's a real horse made of diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stupid. because I'm like rich. <laughs> and yeah, he's eating Which a bag cool. of pretzels throughout the entire thing. <laughs> Anyway, mm. yes, brilliant character. I, I mean, if you, I I think this single player game is quite interesting. Yeah, uh, the, the way Lance through. Two. I think it's much better than the first one. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, it, it, they've found their own. I think with that. I think yeah. Actually, thinking about it, there's so many awesome characters in Borderlands Two, like Tiny Tina as well. Uh, Tj, yeah. Tj, um, what's his name? Tk Tk Baha. Baha, yeah. yeah. He's from the He's... original, isn't he? Is he in the original? Is he oh, original? yeah, that's because we've been playing that one recently, haven't we? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of really good characters. I, I, I forget the name of the guy who wrote it, but um, his sister plays um, plays t- as Tiny Tina. Tiny Tina. Yeah, did, right. yeah. How do we all forget all the, uh, all, all the Borderlands characters? Yeah, I know. It's, and even, what's her name? Moxie. She's, she's pretty... pretty Intense yeah. character as well, isn't she? She's, yeah, she speaks only in innuendo. Yeah, pretty much. She reminds me of. Um, it might even be the same voice actor. I can't. It might be her doing the voice acting. Um, Annie from Community for some reason. I don't know why she reminds me of Annie from Community because she's nothing like her. But oh, um, Alison Brie. That's it, Alison Brie. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Very quickly, uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show you a quick clip. I didn't put put this in the document, but I did put this suggestion in, Ooh. and see if um, see if you guys, I'm sure all you guys know exactly where this is from. No, nope, because we didn't play Nintendo, so we don't know about Duck Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> what? Just <laughs> repeatedly popping up. This dog, right? I swear to God, you, there was moments where you had to shoot loads and loads of um, clay pigeons or ducks that you know that were flying around, but he just he popped up right at the wrong time every time, and he had a little laugh to him. In fact, yeah. is the laugh on this? It should be. Yeah, this is just that's just there literally like a minute of him laughing. There's no other gameplay from it. Is that is his that... laugh? Yeah. It's just square wave. Yeah, but well, it's, it's yeah, a Nintendo. It? <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's just it's so laugh. It's just going beep 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 beep. Anyway, he's one of the the, the most <laughs> annoying characters of uh, in computer games ever made, and that isn't a character that has developed. He's just a character that needs to die and if you shot him you lost <laughs> <laughs> and you would want to shoot him every time because he's like oh my anyway that was just a little segue well, a little then. segue into another more annoying character um well i could i could try and choose one yeah because that was technically a tangent not a segue a segue needs to lead somewhere chris whatever <laughs> right um Unless you guys have got anything to to add, I'm there's gonna quite a few. There's quite a few still. Um, talk about someone who um, I think all of you guys must have played this at some point. <laughs> yeah. I know this one, and I can sing the song as well, and I'm not going to do so. <laughs> Kick, punch, it's all, it's all in, in the mind. mind. If you want oh, to yes, I'm sure you'll find that the things I teach you, I sure would have Yeah. Anyway, good yeah, memories. I, very good memories and ridiculous. Like it was, it was one of the first early. Um, rhythm games, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, there was there was ones before this, but yeah, generally it was. Uh, it's an it's it's a first a mainstream fun. one. But as a character, again, he, he's he's got kind of a redeeming, not a redeeming. What's it called when they annoying? He's got he's got a bit of a knock, hasn't he? Hey, flat T, because it's all flat on the game. <laughs> Very good. Um, oh, the puns I mean, are just it's... flying out, aren't they? He's a bit of a PlayStation legend. That's what I was trying to get out. I think he'll always be uh, he'll always be in people's minds. Yeah, it was well, kind of heavily promoted, wasn't see what it? I, did there. I, I played yeah. it on the. Uh, I played. The, I already played this level, and it was on a demo disc. I think it was it, hard towards it, the end. It, it was really hard. difficult. The whole game, like when you get to the last concert at the end. Um, but I, what was really fun about this game was just the sense of humor. Like from the start, you're learning how to cook. From a guy who teaches it like a karate class, who is a giant onion, yeah. <laughs> like, chop master and, onion. Yeah, it's brilliant. And then there's, uh, there's one, there's one really good level where you literally have to wrap your way to the head of the queue to go to the toilet. <laughs> so you really keep to the that. toilet. You have to like, you have to like wrap better than the guy in front of you. And then he'll let you take his place in the queue to the toilet. And you you're all, you're all there like life. holding. Yeah, basically that's the that's the rules, right? I, well, I just have to say to people who don't know who this is, this is Parappa the rapper. 
Yeah. I don't believe that's I said that before, did I? That's Chop Master Onion beside him. Chop Master Onion. Yeah. Chop, chop. But yeah, rhythm game, pressing X, triangle, square, and the other one. Circle. Circle, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't was the PlayStation player. Wasn't the plot just that he wanted to, wanted to um, impress a girl, basically? That's why he did everything. Is it just some girl that he wants to impress and so he has to do a concert to do that? I, I don't remember that much, I'll be honest. Is the end one... I never got to the end. Is it a concert, the last? I'm sure it's a concert. You have to do like a wrap-off against, I think, some douche rival guy or something or, or some big star and then you'll become a big star or something. I could be remembering that completely incorrectly, but uh, it built up to a big, a fairly big-ish ending. Now, any others that you guys want to talk about? Um, to the top of your heads? I was going to um, say Geralt of Rivia. Oh, right, Witcher. The Witcher, Witcher dude. Who is uh, currently my favourite kind of mythical hero character. Okay. Just because I've been playing through the game and reading the books at the same time. You're such a book whore. Sorry. <laughs> Steve, Steve developed the ability to read at an early age, Chris. It's, it's quite novel. <laughs> Um, yeah, but Geralt is, um, he's that a witcher who is, you, I, I just don't care, um, who is uh. basically an orphan, um, the, the kidnapped his children and then fed a load of mutagens, the ones that survive go on to become witches, and they live by a very strict code, mm. um, they're basically, um, like swords for hire, when it yeah. comes to kind of like demons and, you know, like griffins and, uh, you know, all, all the nasty sort of stuff. Uh, the you, you explained and, that a few episodes ago. What's, yeah, yeah, I what's think the so. character um, in term? What, what is he? What kind of The character is himself, he? he's just, like I say, he um, he lives by a strict code. Um, and although he does do evil things, um, he, it's like he does them in a nice way, but it, it it's a fact that he does stick quite stringently to this code of ethics. And you can really relate to him. It's he's he's a likable character. He's very skilled. He's very focused, uh, but he's also got his foibles. And uh, like he has got a very he's he's got a soft spot for alcohol and women, <laughs> for example, which is like relatable. Um, but he, he, he sh- <laughs> stud muffin Steve over here. <laughs> they said stud muffin Steve. <laughs> yeah, but Steve actually pickles his women in alcohol. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the best way to eat them, isn't it? <laughs> but um, he uh, he does do questionable things, but the questionable things are are kind of justifiable. I remember I watched this. This is from the first one, isn't it? Yeah, it's the intro sequence from the first one. Um. I have played he's, a little bit of the first one, but I, I, I didn't get on with the mechanics. Although he does look relatively similar to Dante, he is actually proper cool and not just trying to be cool. He's cool <laughs> because he doesn't care whether he's cool. He, he just kind of... You, this whole intro sequence made me think he was really cool, and then I started playing as him, and I was like, is this it? One one click? Like, that's, the that's control it. mechanism is a lot better on Witcher 2 than it is on Witcher 1. Is it worth playing through Witcher 1 and putting up with it or do I need to kind of start on 2 straight away you could start on 2 straight away I enjoyed Witcher 1 once I got into it right um, I might, I might give it another go at some point there's some decent quests and if as long as you just stick to the main storyline you can get through it quite quickly right I probably so would is he, I like a, is he more of an anti-hero would you say or is he no he's he's definitely on the side of good um, yeah, but, but that's not what an anti-hero is so is it an anti-hero is a hero with flaws who does questionable things, which I think is what you said well, he does. The questionable things that he uh, that he does aren't. Uh, he doesn't do things that are massively evil or bad, but it's he kind of punishes the bad people in quite nasty ways. Ways he, that, he overdoes it. Yeah, I'd say that's not person. a hero. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, because a, he- a hero forgives, basically. Yeah, a, he- a hero is the, the lighter <laughs> lighter type of a hero. A, he- a hero would be, uh, I guess, Luke Skywalker or someone like that. Yeah. Mm. Like a, no! a push-up. A face he pulls. <laughs> He's only had his arm cut off. It's cauter- cauterized. It cauterized. Cauterized. I was yeah. going to say cauterzone, then. Probably, <laughs> still hurt- probably still hurts, though, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> but, maybe. Um... The backstory of the Witcher is very similar to uh, to one of the basically the elephant in the room. I think the Master Chief. 
Yeah. The elephant oh, yeah. in the room. Why? Why, why would you want he, to they, talk they, about Master Chief? Because he is a contentious because character. Because you obviously hate him. No, and big. we don't. And it's we don't. Big. We think he's a good character. There's two people that aren't that impressed with him, and two people that are. So we're gonna we're going to actually argue about something. I think for the first time in this series. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the thing that the Stay and I have that you two don't is that we've read the books. Now my issue we with can that read is, the books and like like Chris. Well, <laughs> my issue with that, that is, oh, is low that, blows, right? Is that how you're going to do this one? Low <laughs> blows. Well, I don't think you can justify a computer game character based on expanded universe material. Based on what he is like in the games is what I'm judging him on. I, on that, on that basis, he doesn't stand agree. up. And it, what yeah. gets me about him is that people say he's this great character, and it's like, what? What is he? All he does is go. We've got to get the job done. That's pretty much the extent of all his dialogue for all four yeah. Halo games. Yeah, it's, and, it's and, a shame because um, the, the Halo universe draws from a much larger um, mythos. The Bungie have got this thing called the the I think it's called the Halo Bible. And it's mm. basically the whole backstory to the universe, the characters, and everything. And a lot of that got taken and turned into some excellent books by Eric Nyland. Um, and because we've got the benefit of reading these books, we can we can see that all of these these little moments that the character has in the game are actually of some significance. Whereas yeah. that, that, that's that's rubbish, though. You I know can't, you can't say that. You can't say you have to read the books in order to understand this I character. Know, I know. And, you but need the thing is, good characters are ones that actually present themselves as a good character in whatever medium they are presenting themselves in. And the agree, thing with it is that the Master Chief has got hidden depths that you can't really understand unless you've unless you've read into this backstory in the universe. But, yeah. <laughs> within, within, <laughs> so? Give but a fuck. I would, I would <laughs> without wanting to get into just like, shouting at each other, I would counter that with, well, within that same universe, there are two characters that are well represented that are only represented in the games. The Arbiter in Halo 2 is way more interesting and engaging than Master Chief. And also Katana. I genuinely like Katana. She's a good character. I thought in the first one she was a little bit, like, too much like an AI. I think in the second and third ones she she, she came out of herself the, a little the bit. Prob the problem mm. is, the problem is, and this the, I can see it from your point of view, guys, and the problem is that throughout the entire Halo series, the Master Chief does not have a story arc. He's just some guy doing things to get to the end, whereas Cortana has a story arc. She yeah. goes through all the things that happen in Halo 3, I think it is, with um, with Gravemind. Yeah. And, and all that stuff. And f well, yeah, I've not played 4, but yeah. Um, so I can see it from that point of view. I think the problem we've got, um, Steve and I, is that it's hard to separate the character that we've learned about from the books from what we've seen in the game. And I all understand of those things that. have a lot more relevance. But and this is why, this is why means... everybody argues that it's not like the book, you know? Because the book... Is something that you form an opinion on. You form your own visions of what goes on in the book, and then a film or a, a game will will either let you down or make you go, "Yeah, that's that's what I thought." Yeah, I think if anything, that the games have let the story down in terms of Master Chief's story. But I think they they kind of had to. I think that was a yeah, conscious I, decision because I don't because... think that you could have represented the Master Chief like, the way he is in the books in a game. Yeah, it mm. would have turned out. It would have came out really whiny and sort of. Um, sort of like this weird sort of emo introvert because a lot of what's going on in the book is going on from his point of view and it's in his head mm. it's very strange and it's very hard for us to separate the two um, so what, what kind of character is he in the book then? Um, well the, the backstory of the Master Chief is basically he was abducted as a, as a toddler because they saw um, a potential in him to basically survive the um, and I can't forget the name of the program that they go through, yeah, but Spartan basically the, the, Spartan the Spartan program. program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So basically, the Spartans are kind of genetically modified humans who have sort of this crazy sort of um, coding button the bones, and yeah, well. and but they get put into these the, the Mjolnir armor, which is sort of hyper reactive to the way they move. And if you put a normal human in that armor, basically, if they try and move, they just destroy themselves as their arms break and the bones shatter and they tear themselves in half because the, the suit is so yeah. powerful. But the surgery and kind of like the, the ordeal he has to go through in order to get to this point, it's, I mean, it's very emotional. Um, it's, <laughs> it's. I don't, I don't it's really associate emotion with Halo for some reason. Yeah, because it's suppressed. He's basically been raised his entire life to be a soldier. 
Oh yeah, I, I got that. Much. Uh, and like, also, like... he's been kept as a as a secret from everyone. No one knew who they were. All you know about him is his name is John, and his number is one one seven. I think it is. This yeah. sounds very familiar, like uh, like soldier soldiers from Final Fantasy. Yeah, it is kind sounds of is. Very, you know, yeah, the, conditioned, the abducted kinda... and modified, and basically, um, his family was left with a clone. Yeah. So there is a clone out there of the original child. That's creepy. It's all. Yeah, it's it's it, there's a lot of backstory it's, there, and it's, it's excellent backstory as well. It sounds really interesting, but as I said, I think. You but have it's to... not. But it's not representing the game, and that, from that point of view, I can see totally you why you see just this this baseless, boring character uh, who does a, a couple of wise cracks occasionally to Cortana. I don't think that I don't. I mean, I break it off a bit harsher than I actually feel towards it because I've played through all four of the main canon Halo games and enjoyed them to a degree. And I have nothing against Master Chief. I just think he's overrated. People put him up as this, one of the best, and it's like he really cannot compare to some of the other people that we've already talked about and people yeah. we're yet to talk about, like the guy Chris is showing now, who even I know is a more interesting and rounded yeah. uh, character. And Well, well you guys thought about him. The thing is with Sephiroth, 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 Sephiroth or whatever you want to call him, is that he is, one, he was conditioned, and two, some you know something has happened to him that uh, was a oh, look at that sword. <laughs> Sorry, I love the I love these films. I know a lot of people didn't, but I really really loved I love them. I love the Advent Children. I love all of the Final Fantasy films, Spirits Within, and you love Spirits uh, Within. Oh yeah, I thought I, th I thought it was beautiful. You bloody it looks like pervert! <laughs> it's awful, man. Pervert? What the... <laughs> you, you, you don't you don't have to be sexually perverted. You can just be a pervert. <laughs> right, okay. Just because you're an awful man. A degenerate. It's just a general degenerate. I liked it. I, I liked it mainly because of the looks, though, more than anything. I was like, I was really impressed by. It, it came out before Spirit, um, Advent Children, didn't it? And it had uh, Alec Baldwin doing one of the voices, which is probably nice, you know. <laughs> doing, I'm right, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> but yeah, Se Sephiroth. Obviously, he's been. Um, I think essentially brainwashed, hasn't he? That's that's the, the that's what it comes down to. Yeah, he's he's mental, basically. Yeah. He's a nutcase. Um, but he who's is also, cool as. Yeah, yeah. I think I am struggling to think actually what makes for the redeeming character, yeah, redeeming character sort of things that I like about Sephiroth. But I think it's just the fact that he's a nutcase. He's he's he, like overzealous. He's very and, capable. He's not very well written, and because he's not very well written, you can read in a bit more into him than there's actually there. I think that makes him an interesting character from that point of view. I mm. think everyone has a slightly different opinion of what Sephiroth is. Well, the thing is, that, that Final Fantasy VII is, is not the best scripted, is it, in the world? No. So that's why we've got all these different interpretations. But and at the end of the day, from what I can tell, he was, he was brainwashed via Soldier, and then he became brainwashed via... Genova. Yeah. That's that's well, basically he's, what he's I see. He's a clone, him. isn't he? Or is he a clone? No, no everything else I'll is a clone honest. of him. The, the story is so nebulous, and I think yeah. that's why we like it because we've just read into it. It's like the imagination has filled the gaps. I bet you. I bet your Final Fantasy addict, seven addicts would disagree and say, "No, this is exactly how it is. This is the exact." Because you look on wikis, and there's actually stories about these people. So there's got yeah, to be some I've, kind of definitive I've, story, hasn't it? I've read huge sort of uh, treatments of the script and everything, and I've read mm. through the entire script of the game, and I still don't quite understand it. I've but I kind of like that. I, I get the same feeling from the um, the recent Christopher Nolan Batman movies. The same thing. It feels like I shouldn't quite understand everything that's going on, but it's cool anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's the same with me. I still there's still a lot of elements of Final Fantasy that I I don't get. Um, he seems of, like quite a tragic sort of villain from the bits that I remember playing at the game. He had a sort of. Uh, it seems like he was yeah. From what you said, he's been brainwashed by two different sets of people. Yeah, been he's treated quite it, badly in his life. People. He also, yeah, he also kind of feels uh, he feels like he's the only human that's actually real, or the only person that's actually real. And he treats everyone else like puppets. And he doesn't understand when Cloud is um, they're kind of breaking down because he's just killed uh, Ares. Yeah, uh, Sephiroth puppets. doesn't understand how Cloud can be upset about it because he's just. <coughs> just I uh, hate that character. Yeah. Speaking of puppets, everybody does. Uh, Kate yeah, Seth can Kate Seth. suck my cock. Yeah, well, really I'd, rather, I'd rather left my cock alone to be honest, but I hate that character. This and is I, this is the moment in the game where he he betrays the entire team. Um, it's not even that, that. It's not even that that makes me hate him. What makes me hate him is that he's so visually out of place. 
and he only has two limit breaks. He's the only character with two oh, limit a, breaks. Yeah, he's, he's a crap. He's, he's a crap rubbish. Character. He's absolutely rubbish. But um, yeah, I, I think it's more the jarring fact that you're playing a game where you're getting quite attached to the characters, and then a massive stuffed bloody uh, whatever just, the hell whatever it is with it a cat on its head bounces around like that yeah. every time he's, play, he's like, having a fight. It. It's like, is mate, it, just I'm stand getting, still. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this. There's, there's one moment actually where. The first one that you meet gets killed, basically, by... He sacrifices himself, but it's, it's just, just a robot. Yeah, well, it's, 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 yeah, it's the pyramid it's moment, the, uh, it? yeah, the yeah, Temple but, of the um, Ancients. But you still don't... Re I mean, you feel a little bit for him then, but then you've always got to remember that he's actually being controlled by one of the Shinra guys back at base. Remo. Reeve. Reno. Reeve, Reeve, sorry, not Reno. Yeah, with his little beard. But yeah, as a, as a character, it's so, so jarring to suddenly have this. I mean, even Red Thirteen isn't that jarring. You kind of get really used to like the fact. Red 13. Yeah, you might kind of get used I to like the fact that you kind of get used to the fact that you're talking to this weird lion thing with a fire on its tail. But I can't yeah. get used to Kit. Kit Seth. He's just his story. So random. Though, Kit, uh, speaking of characters and stories, and I haven't got any footage of him, but um, Red Thirteen story is really quite invoking, yeah. isn't it? It's evoking. Sorry. She yeah. thinks, what was it, that is, was it his grandfather? His father was his a coward. Father betrayed them, yeah, but he wasn't, yeah. and he saved the village, and then he cries a tear of materia. Mm. That's actually a really hard hitting scene now. I remember it feeling is. a slight lump in my throat at that bit. The music and everything is beautiful, isn't the it? Whole, yeah, the whole bit leading up to that, where you're fighting kind of old ancient demons and stuff, yeah. and, and uh, even though it's, you know, the, the quite generic enemies, I think, but the whole and bit leading up to that is, is really. Just yeah. going to the back to the boss battles episode for a bit of moment. The uh, the last <laughs> boss in that area, you can throw a phoenix down at it and kill it instantly. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I, if you don't do that, it's really bloody hard as well. It is really hard. Um, yeah, I, right. There's there's a few characters that I wanted to talk about in um, in Shadowrun Returns, which I mentioned earlier. Mm. Now I'm going to show you some footage. It said it's it's quite hard to kind of see the characters and see what they're doing because everything's text in the game. And it's um, this is like the intro sequence. Let me uh, let me just play it. So you you're basically Love the look of that game. It, it's it's a beautiful looking game. It's well it plays well as well. Um, there's a few little bugs in it, but I think it's generally a very good game to play if you like turn based, like point and click games. Um, but anyway, there's this Dietrich. You, you're based in Berlin for the whole uh, the whole series uh, the whole game. Um, and your the, the intention is is that Monica, this this girl here that keeps popping up, she's your team leader. Uh, you're a shadow runner, and a shadow runners in these in this world are, are people who um, who run the shadows and basically do dodgy jobs. It, it, to be fair, the more I talk about it, the more that I've taken so much influence from the shadow run universe for my game. Um, it, it, uncanny amounts, in fact, and I feel a little bit bad for it, and I didn't intend. Who's the who's the BD elf? Uh, that's that's probably the character because I haven't seen that before. Uh, yeah. My character was uh, like a little dwarf dude who was a hacker, but you, you have different <laughs> classes. Anyway, this is what the first character that I wanted to talk about, Glory. She's got a pretty tragic backstory. Um, she's really really stoic, ice cold all the way through it, straight to the point. But as you uh, evolve, you've got like a home base, and when you go back to your home base, you've you'll have seen this in other games. You can talk to the characters and kind of evolve the story until. They get to a point where they go, nope, I'm not going to talk to you. Um, go off and do another mission, and then I'll come back and talk to me again, and you get a bit more info. And it kind of spaces it out throughout the entire game. I mean, Iga's the second one I wanted to talk to. She's like a, she's like a really hardcore sol soldier. She's okay. really like, yeah, really, on it's a troll. She's a troll. Oh. Uh, she's really on point, really strong character, but she hates you because... Um, we, I don't want to spoil anything for you. You might even see it during this um, during this cutscene. But if you do ever want to play it, I would recommend. Um, I'd recommend probably playing the first one. You know, Dragon. Uh, no, the not Dragon Age. <sighs> every time, every time. This is Dragonfall. Shadowrun Returns, the original game, yeah. is also very good as well. Uh, I can't remember it too well because it's a while since I played it. But yeah. Um, the whole the whole point is is that you build up relationships to these characters throughout the game, but you don't have to. You could just leave it. Um, Glory, um, she's got like augmentations all over her body, and basically you, the story is you're trying to find out why she's got a whole body as augmentations. Um, and by the end of it, she explains a, f a pretty horrible and tragic story that happened to her, and it and it makes you, it makes you also answer questions. Um, there's quite a lot of dialogue between you and Iger, the troll that we just saw, and Iger hates you because you've kind of taken over a job that should have been 
done by somebody else, and I don't again don't want to spoil it. Um, but she spends the entire game basically saying, "Nope, you're you're wrong." Uh, and then towards you know the end of the game, that changes and it becomes a much nicer relationship. And yeah, it's 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 a great game um, as long as you don't mind turn based combat and you don't mind I, I like, managing yeah. resources. It's it's brilliant. I love the look of the game. It's a, I love the isometric. I love cyberpunk, and that's just beautiful. It, it's also um, one of the things about it. The um, I've forgotten. No, it's gone. There was something it's else gone. that I was going to say. Then just gone, just gone. Anyway, um, I just wanted to mention it because it's something I said I played and finished recently, and really enjoyed. Really enjoyed the game. Cool. Oh, excuse me. So come on, guys. Who's uh, who's got another thing to talk about? Sam's not anything in a while. I've seen, like I've said, loads. I've yeah, as he did spend the entire first hour talking, pretty much. So. Stay hasn't yeah. said much in a while. <laughs> Sorry. Stay hasn't said much in a while. I've got I've got a few more I can mention if you if you want me to. Um, I was going to suggest Max Payne. Okay. okay. Max um, Payne is the complete opposite of uh, the way I feel about Kratos to be honest he is the an first anti-hero. couple of games I didn't really like him but in the third game I actually really like the character Max playing, uh, played I, I, I haven't played it but I really want to it's it, it is a really good game um, but you kind of like you get to know more about well him himself and the troubles he's got he's, he's, he's a heavy drinker he's addicted to painkillers which is probably from the first game because that's all you take to heal yourself um <laughs> The, the dynamics of the game are pretty much the same. You still got the bullet time, um, but it's a lot more personable. Like you're not just running around warehouses killing people. The uh, the, uh, the people that you're after all have a backstory. Well, the and whole first game, you spe- you had kept having little um, visions, didn't you? And little dreams, yeah. and you you walked around like on a, a plane in space or in loads of black stuff. And when yeah. you got to the end of the the trail. I remember this from playing it. It stuck in my mind. Um, you got to the end of the trail. You you kind of saw a bit more of his story, and it was always like, um, for example, his wife being dead or something. It was you his know, wife and his uh, baby his girl or his young girl. There was what, one moment in that game I remember walking into his house. I think it might have been right at the beginning. I can't remember. And it, and his his family entire family had been murdered, and he was like, it's like. I felt for him. I felt really bad for him, and I was like, I can understand why he's basically been a vigilante for the entire game. Yeah. You know, well, things don't really get much better for him. But um, I, f- I find you can relate a lot more to him uh, in the third game, and uh, it's like, probably again like an anti-hero. Um, he's vicious when he needs to be, but it's almost like he really can't be asked with it anymore. He's seen that much death and destruction. He just he, he just wants to be left alone, but he keeps on getting drawn into this type of stuff. Yeah, well, you, again, that's a bit of a tragic hero thing, isn't it? For, yeah. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was Danny a brilliant Glover. game. I, I remember the first game, and I remember really enjoying playing it. Again, the bullet time thing was really cool back then. Was it Was it after The Matrix, or was it before The Matrix? It was after. It was It was directly influenced by The Matrix. Yeah. Remember the Matrix was 2000. Yeah. That so was the first Max Payne, though. Well, it, was it, came, out, that, it, yeah. it came out over here a bit later, didn't it? But yeah, it was, it was it was that right around that time. Right, I've got two more that I really want to talk about before we we finish the show. Um, again, if you guys have any others you want to talk, feel I've free. I've got I've got one more I want to jump in quickly, just because it's something that's relevant to what we said earlier, and I won't okay. spend ages on it. But it's it's the boss from Metal Gear Solid Three, because we were talking about that um, about the strong female character who is the one that you sort of look up to. And I completely forgot that the boss is that. Um, yeah, yeah. You one of the best characters point. in that franchise, but probably one of the best characters in computer games in general. She's very, very complicated. And you can't really talk about her too much without giving away spoilers, but she's basically, because um, there's so many people called boss, so there's Big Boss, who is Solid Snake's dad. And then the boss is a female soldier who was a war hero in World War Two, who at the beginning of Metal Gear Solid Three defects to the Soviet Union but then you realise why she defected and what she was doing, and she had her own mission, and she's very deep and complicated, and but also completely tough as nails. Like you, say, encou- you encounter nails, her, snake. <laughs> yeah, you encounter her like four times in the game, and she just takes you down with no effort whatsoever. To the point where when you get to the end, and obviously there's a fight with her, you're like, this is gonna be really hard, and it is quite hard. <laughs> And it's got a really, really emotional payoff. Her whole story in the Battle Gear Solid Three, like when we get to it, Chris, 
Yeah. Even with us there, you might end up shedding a manly tear because it's it hits hard. Like it well, hits hard. I I'll donate I'll, extra I've, for that. I've, That's I've a donation that incentive. I will because I can't hear the game that well. And I'm hoping that when we play Peace Walker and MGS3, I'm going to be able to hear things a bit better because because everyone's talking and stuff. It's not really the same as playing it on your own, is it? We'll no. see. I'll, I might cry just for you. I can do that on command anyway. But that was it. She's one of those characters that fits what we talk about. That's it. She's great. Cool. Bad video you chose there, by the way. Soz. Terrible. Terrible person. <laughs> right. Um, I want to give an honourable honourable mention to... Um, an indie game that uh, that I think personally did characters amazingly, considering what they what it did, uh, and there was no characters uh, characters didn't speak in it. Um, a game called Thomas Was Alone, um, done by an indie indie developer called Mike Bithell. Uh, I, I, if, again, if you're into indie dev, you've probably heard of the guy. He's, he became quite famous from it. It was a 24 hour game jam. Anyway, this game, I'm going to have to play some audio for this as well because it is uh, it needs it. Otherwise, you're just going to look at it and go, what? what? <laughs> it's a bit pointless. Um, the game itself is a puzzle game. And you, you're basically a shape called Thomas. And this shape... Let me just turn the audio on so the audience can hear. And this shape... Uh, there's, a, there's a voiceover by Danny Wallace... Uh, sort of Assassin's Creed ilk, and all the, many, many other things. But anyway, the basically this Thomas guy, he's an AI, and he, he's and the whole point of the game is to just kind of get through all the different types of puzzles. And all of the shapes in the game have names: Christopher, Sarah, Thomas. Dead simple stuff, but each one of them do different things, so they've all got different personalities. And the script itself kind of... It's won many awards, this game, because because of this. Uh, the script itself is really quite... Um, clever, I think. And, and again, very, very well voiced by, by Danny Wallace. Is it got a similar feel to, um, to the Stanley Parable? Um, feel... Uh, yes, uh, certainly not gameplay. <laughs> no, no, not gameplay, but it's narrated, isn't it? And it's like you're telling, it's talking about what you're doing as you do it. So there's there's one point, for example, you meet a girl. I can't remember her name. I think she might she might be Sarah or something. But you meet a, a girl who's a flat like oblong, and you use her to jump. You use her to bounce off her. And one of the things that the narrator says is that he felt like she felt like she was being walked on, and it's really quite clever the way that it's been written. Um, I said kudos to the guy. Um, said, yeah, it's it's a it's a it was an interesting game to play. I haven't played it all the way through because I, I got a bit bored of the puzzles. I'll be honest with you, but the the, the narration and I thought, yes, it was well deserved of the awards it won. Very hmm. good. I think you'd enjoy it if you like puzzle games. It's you know it's one of those. I have played it. I didn't get into it. I was like, yeah, I got bored of the puzzles. Yeah. Good concept though. It's a brilliant concept, yeah. and I said the story in itself, I think, is worth listening to because it's just a bit it's a bit funny it's a bit funny and it's it's quite not satirical um quite, in cheek. Sar quite sarcastic i think is the right way to say it anyway that's enough i think i think people could probably hear that a little bit but yeah it was um you know what i didn't actually show that at all then i clicked i'm gonna have to show, show the <laughs> you not show any of that i didn't show any of that did they hear it uh, they heard yeah. it, but they didn't well, see it. Well, I think that'd right. be enough. I'll play it again so you can at least see what the gameplay is like while I talk. But yeah, so I, I said that there was loads of different characters. All of the boxes do different things. You need to use the the ships to to get to different areas and to do different puzzles and stuff. Just just a bit of fun, you know. But I think it was quite good. And this guy's made a you know he's made a career out of um, making this game over a twenty four hour game jam putting the concept together and then he's made it into a proper game, got a voiceover and all the other stuff. Mm. But anyway, the story is interesting. Mm. The story is interesting. Sorry about that, guys. I had too many things to click then. I had to unmute it and everything. Um, and the last one that I wanted to mention before I'm going to go is uh, Guybrush Th Threepwood <laughs> from, from one of my favourite franchises ever invented ever made i really wish i could play i mean i think there's a there's a hd remake isn't there of the original it's quite yeah, good as well it's quite yeah accurate. i'd like to, i'd like to i'd love to play this game because i played it little bits on scum vm and stuff like that but not 
I've not really got into it, and they, I've heard the humor and the writing is brilliant in it's, it. It's it's some of the best writing I've it's, ever seen in my it's life. It's almost for a game. Terry Pratchett level of, of writing, coming from very, Americans as well. Very clever, very clever. Is it American? Yeah, it's Lucas <clears> Arts. <throat> Right. You got something against America is that they can't do clever writing or something. Yeah, no, the, I think, know, I just, the, the, the thing irony English... is a type of mineral. <laughs> they had um, they had uh, they had an English vibe to it. I don't know, maybe because of the pirate thing. I don't know. English Was it pirates. not written by English people? Just produced by an American studio? I don't think so. Yeah, what about Portal? That's you know, all American. It was, That's um, hilarious. It was g -g 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 -g. what's his name? The guy who wrote it. Shit. <laughs> That's really famous. Was, Garland, was uh, written by Ron Gilbert, Dave Ron Gilbert. Rosman, and Tim Schafer. And Ron Gilbert is English, I think. Is he? I think. Is that a Ron Gilbert? Uh... You know what? I hope I'm not wrong there. Because no, it's from, it's from uh, Oregon. Right. Yeah, that's Lee Stockton, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, there's lots of little cool bits in the game, and, and his character shines through the entire game because there's loads of characters in the game, in fact, that are really interesting to, to play, but... Again, everything about this, the art style, the music, the, the characters, the the in-jokes. I mean, this, I, I played the first three when I was young, and then I played I played the fourth and fifth one recently, and then I think there's another one, possibly. Um, I didn't get on with the fourth one as much as, uh, as, much as I maybe should have done. Uh, maybe it's because I played it too late, I think. I love these dialogue scenes with the the big uh, the big drawn like pink painted faces. It's <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. I like the fact that when he said "What are you doing in Monkey Island?" it said "TM" next to Monkey Island. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot um, of there's a lot of daft humor in it. It's it, I, say, I think personally it's worth playing for anybody these days. I kind of want to play him. Isn't he basically inept but likable, Guybrush Street? Totally. Isn't He's that really basically sad. his thing? Yeah, I mean it's it, it's very you can compare it a lot to. Um, to Terry Pratchett's stuff, he's very similar to um to what's his name, uh, Rincewind. I haven't read any Terry Pratchett, I'm afraid. It's Me a neither. game. I think there's a point and click game where you can play. Discworld. Color, color of Magic, yeah. I've played Discworld, but I, I didn't play it enough. I played it at a mate's house on. It was on some weird console or weird PC. Is it's like the PC Engine or something like that that I've not, I have ever yeah. tried again. Anyway, that's my last. Uh, my what about um, mention. do you want to, do you want to quickly jump into Portal and there's the three characters from Portal, or yeah. do we not leave that for another time? Because it feels like we'd be bad to do characters in games and not talk about yeah. Let's do it. Let's do, there's, yeah. there's also the fact that we have talked about Portal a lot in a lot of the a lot of the series. Is is that's true? I but there are three great characters that we've we've pointed out in Portal. And I think there's only three characters. There are many. Portal. I mean, the, the, you know, you can almost count the uh, weighted companion cube as a quite a strong <laughs> characterization. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you could. Uh, and there's the two, uh, the two bots that you play as co-op in Portal 2 have quite got their own characteristics just from their physical mm. um, things that they do, the little physical thing. I want to stick the audio on for this one again because uh, it matters. Yeah, think, definitely this. with this character. Um, ah, is this Cave Johnson, is it? Yeah. Welcome to the Enrichment Center. Oh, I love Cave Johnson. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like Cave Johnson more than GLaDOS, actually. Is this um, Cave? Yeah, it is, yeah. He's one of my favourite characters in the game ever. I keep saying that about everything, don't I? I really, really, really like... like J.K. Simmons is one of those guys who's just... He just elevates things to a level. Obviously, he was brilliant as J. Joe and Jameson in Spider-Man. He's brilliant in this. Like, he just does brings a lot to it, doesn't he? Everybody, everybody should have a J.K. Simmons in their house. Yeah. <laughs> the that would be really great creepy well. if I found J.K. Simmons in my toilet. Yeah, just hello. I think the, the great thing about this is, is it, it, ma it makes the, the world and the boring bits of Portal Two more interesting. Yeah, because he's talking to you over the over the over intercom or whatever. But it's a pre-record. He's obviously well dead, isn't he? Mm. It's, yeah, uh, it's pre-recorded the entire time. I love his flagrant disregard for, for health and safety. His own, his own as well, not just yeah. everyone else's. It's brilliant. Yeah. Life gives you lemons. Eat. Don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back. <laughs> make life Get take mad. the lemons back. <laughs> Get mad. <laughs> I love at this point that Glados is a potato as well. Yeah. I love it. I love the fact that Glados it it, re it actually reveals via Cave Johnson yeah. who Glados is as well. Yes. And to those who haven't played it, I'm not going to spoil it because it is a little bit of a spoiler. Well, I, I think. just remembered that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just, I mean, you boil him down, he's like a bombastic, you know, go getter of science. <laughs> From a well, I guess well, it goes through several decades, doesn't it? But it looks like it starts in the in the sort of seventies, I think, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it's on 60s, from there. Isn't it? The sixties, even. Thank you. I like yeah. it. one thing that uh, I it was a bit of a uh, suspension suspension of disbelief moment for me, where the fact that you're walking through the underground facility, I can't remember the name of it now. It's not Black Mesa, is it? It's um, just in Aperture. 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 Well, then yeah. it turns into something else, but. You're walking through it, and every decade, it's it seems to be conveniently, you know, it seems to be conveniently um, chrono. chrono yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a 1970s Worse. section, a 1980 yeah. section. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, 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 that's the my only criticism really of Portal Two. I think I, did, I didn't did jar me at all. I didn't even think of that. It seems just just natural. Variety, yeah. It didn't. Yeah, it, I, they did it well. But as I said, that was my only real criticism. I think I I did a review of it and I gave Portal Two ten out of ten. It was, is amazing, amazing game through. Can pl- re- reviewer you? Um, what? What's wrong just, with that? Just see play play game. Nine out of ten. Sure. Never give anything four months. <laughs> no, I never. think I think Portal Two is probably one of the games that deserves it though. I mean, I I'd, I'd give it. I'd give it ten out of ten over. I loved, the it the first hour, I loved it the first time I played it too, but I played through it again and I got bored halfway through. The, I, the, I played through the it three The story times. and everything is brilliant, but the puzzles get in the way. The, you know what, Lou? It's a puzzle game and you're going to yeah, know, know the puzzles. We've had this conversation before. You're going to play the puzzles, know what the puzzles are, and then that, obviously it's going to be boring the second time. So don't play it within a couple of months. Play it a couple of years after you've I played it. I did play it a whatever. couple of years afterwards. You didn't. You're lying. Sure. No, I did. I played right. it when it first came out. Thanks, everyone, recently. for watching. We'll... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right before we do go then is there anybody else who wants to give anyone a mention I think we've covered everything uh, you can bang Victor on from Suica then okay I, I have not it. played those games so no, I it's, it's another one for me and Steve really but maybe yeah. Steve, I think Steve's missed he's... the Suica then oh, I love Suica then um, is this the bit that I picked for the video I hope so yeah, it's actually quite good. He's when he's uh, he meets Necklord, who's actually one his like arch enemy during the game. Yeah, Necklord. <laughs> like Victor's one ever. of these characters that kind of, at least for the first two so it ends, um, who reoccurs, and he's 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 just a rock. He's a he's an extremely hard character. He takes everything you know on his uh, on his shoulders. Doesn't flinch once, apart from at one point in the game, which is this bit where he just goes mental. Hmm. And yes, as a complete breakdown, and he's just uncontrollable. But as a character, it's fantastic. If you've got Victor in your team, you know you're onto a winner. I was going to say, is he a member of your party, as it were? Is that, is well, that... they all are. There's, like 108, there's 108 characters that can all be in your party. Yeah. Jesus. I didn't realise yeah, 108 Sweden stars was of destiny. Yeah, yeah this part, kind of part, game. part of what you're going to do is fill a castle with 108 people. They can't all be that interesting characters, though. Surely, they, 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 they're all gonna be there's some that are just space fillers, basically. But Victor's yeah. one of the main characters, and he's yeah. there from the beginning of the first so we could end right through till the end of the second one. Mm. And right. after that, the story kind of changes, and it's not the same so we could end after that. Yeah. Looks but he's just a fantastic character. I never it? really thought about Sprite. how. Yeah, it is. I never really thought about how much of an amazing feat that was to have 108 playable characters. Mm. And all ridiculous. with different specials and different. Yeah, everyone has their own room, don't don't they? Like, I think uh, uh, Victor's is the ballroom, which just makes him Do, rock hard. Is have you got that many playable characters? Because is it permadeath when they die? No, no, no. 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 Hmm. Basically, there's 108 stars of destiny. Each one of these 108 um, characters has a unique rune, and a rune's like a magic stone. And it's when all these 108 characters unite that you have the strength to overcome the main evil of the game. It's Necklord. actually very typical of that. T- that st- Necklord's not the main buddy, buddy by the way. No, he's like, just oh, right, very much a sub buddy. Oh, right. Yeah, but, okay. but the, um, it's very much in the Japanese vein of an adventure where you meet lots of interesting characters and sharing a bit of their story. It's like a lot of animes do that. Um, and this just kind of presented a game with a massive, like, well, seemingly massive story with all mm. of those characters, each with a little bit of a backstory to them. Yeah. I think I've seen it um, on a speed run where someone gets all 108 characters and does it in about 11 hours. Yeah, I would think if you got 108, you can't level them all up to the point where they're that useful. No, no. And you yeah. must have to pick and choose your, the ones that you I bet that was Lou, that, wasn't it? Because he's minted games and only does <laughs> speed running. 
He does a speed run blind, like when he first buys the game from the shop, speed runs it. <laughs> just speed runs the first playthrough. <laughs> just just yeah. running into walls and running to my death. <laughs> speed run into the lava. Right. Oh, that's, Sorry. that's a good uh, a, a, a good video choice there, Sam. What is this? This. Right, I haven't, I haven't put it up yet for everybody. This is, yeah, a game called Little Computer People on the Commodore 64, right? And literally, I spent I spent hours playing this game. And all it is, see that little dude in the bottom right? Yeah. He appears. I mean, on the C64, it's slightly different from all the other versions. Um, it wasn't persistent, but on all other versions, uh, such as the Amiga and the Spectrum and other things, you would... Uh, this never came out on oh, Spectrum, by the okay, way. Okay, sorry, someone's put a, a thing on it I didn't realise. But, um, yeah, so basically this guy came into 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 a house and you just spent all your time kind of telling him what to do and what not to do and he would kind of agree with you and maybe not agree with you sometimes. Seems like, like The, the Sims, Sims, basically. Yeah, it was yeah. a really early Sims, but he, um, he, he got really cheeky as well. He played the piano occasionally, put the TV on and things like that. But you <laughs> cheekily could, played the cheeky piano. Cheeky bastard. <laughs> no, no, sorry, that wasn't the cheeky bit. Uh, he, he also had a dog on the C64 version. I'm sure he did. Or, the, or you could get a dog at some point. But, you, you know, he, 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 if you told him to like, go and get water, he'd go and get water thing from outside and fill up the water tank in his house because everyone's got a water cooler. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I, see the I... little, little cans in the kitchen as well? He'd, he'd eat those. There's his dog. Oh, there you go. Dog. I saw a little um, something about this, and apparently that, every that every cassette had a uh, like a unique character on it or something yeah, like yeah. that. That that room at the top, nobody knew what happened in that room. He disappeared into that room and then came out and kind of looked at you and went, and then that was it. <laughs> it, it, it it's like, all right, mate. <laughs> now that's he's probably his, uh, playing Chopin or something. Hang on. That's his hamshank room. There yeah. we go. See if you can hear that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> What's his knees doing? Look at his knees. Oh, I loved it. I assume that's his knees. It's maybe his please, pockets. There you go. He's, he's asking, please type a letter to me at the top. Um, and you, you could... <laughs> oh, no, yeah. that was... Sorry, that type was... Type me what, a letter, bitch. He, he's now going to write a letter to the person who typed that. So, you know, you can't really do much at the beginning, but then it starts... And it gets a bit boring after a while. You know, you can tell him to go on his computer and have a shower and things like that, but he it, it doesn't do it sometimes if you... And as you, as you said, um, each... Uh, of the Amiga and Spectrum, and I think there was another thing it came out on. It didn't it come was, out on the Spectrum. It was Sorry, persistent. ST. Possibly, I can't remember. Um, but it, all everything but the Commodore 64, it was persistent. So each, as Lou said, each um, cassette or tape or disc or whatever you got that had a unique character on it. And the, the C64 one, it was like every single time you got a new character and it was different every time. I'm not saying that's better or worse. I don't, I don't really know. But there you go. He's now typing... Is typing to the owner. But I'm a thirsty. As, that's one thing a, I like about living. As here. a character, that's the only character that I could think of from my Commodore 64 gaming days that actually had any semblance of a, a personality. Dizzy, Monty Mall. What? Jet Set <laughs> Willy. Dizzy, did Manic Dizzy have a personality? Dizzy? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> he he didn't, didn't really talk, did he? he just, uh, just everyone around. talked to him. Yeah, he didn't talk though, did he? He never said anything or did anything that gave him a personality, in my opinion. Oops. Apart Just from swing, swinging on a rope on Adventure Dizzy and going, that was it. Despite the fact there was no rope in the game. Uh, no, there was a rope on, um, there was ropes in the games, by the way, so shut up. And um, there was a rope on the Adventure uh, Adventure Land Dizzy, I think it was, I can't remember. Um, it, he was swinging on a rope on the uh, the cover of the, of yeah. the, the cassette, cassette. Please dance. Watch this. Look at him walking down the stairs. Oh, oh he's walking he's up the up stairs. Up. He's going back up to dance. A bit of a step aerobic. Look at his dog. That guy, you would not want to meet him in real life, would you? No, no, he's he's proper sad. To, he does not. Not just his just his look. Like I'm just, yeah. I'm just oh, I thinking yeah. of uh, Arnie. He's one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> he's he also wearing pink trousers, which is uh, not a good sign. He's just putting a record on. He's gonna have a dance. <laughs> He's moonwalking! It's it's a Christmas song. Yeah, apparently the, here's the thing. Um the closer to, to Christmas you played the game, the more likely it was to be a Christmas song. Oh, and cool. on Christmas Day it was guaranteed to be a Christmas song. Oh that's <laughs> really, that that kind of detail back then is is impressive, even though the game had no goal or Can anything, you know. Buddha. 
the C64 didn't know what date it was. No, it didn't. It. it did. No, it didn't. It used, I think it was the, 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 the game started at a certain time. And the longer you played it, the more days went by. Oh, right. I can't. I don't, I don't think the Commodore 64 had that feature. The Commodore 64 had quite a lot of features cut out, it and I don't really did, know why. It, it, did, it did, didn't have an onboard uh, timer. Oh, it didn't know what time it was. You could watch him sleep. You know, that is fucking, that's You that's do that anyway. It. I watch you sleep. I know you do. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. There's a, a, a retro <laughs> game with a character in it. Um, <laughs> but as I said, I can't, I can't think of any, any other old games. You just mentioned two, and I can't remember the second one you said. Man, um, Monty Mole. Monty Mole. Well, I would, I would argue in that case, Chucky Egg. He had, a, he was a character. Okay. Paperboy was a character. They, they were characters, but they had no character. Okay. There's a lot of those. There's a lot of those. But this guy, this is a cheeky little guy. You'd knock on the screen as well occasionally if you didn't pay him enough attention, uh, which I, I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, right. So on that note, people, we shall bid you adieu. Thank you very much for watching. Um, just before we go, very briefly, we'll just tell you about our schedule. On schedule. Friday at 6.30, uh, Lou and I, I believe, are going to be playing Gears of War. Yep, hopefully. If we, if we can get it all working and, and up and running. I'll have to bring my Xbox up here and everything, but yeah. I, I too will need to do that. Um, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to probably get it set up beforehand, but we'll figure it out somehow. Um, on Monday, hopefully, I'm going to be playing Metal Gear Solid again with Sam and whoever else wants to join us commentating. If Sam is not available, which may likely be the case, we probably won't be doing a stream on Monday unless Lou or Steve or, or me... Wants to, well, it'd have to be me playing a game, I think, still. <laughs> <laughs> and then unless me and Steve did something over the weekend or something to fill the gap, but I, I don't I don't know if we're going to have time for that at the moment. Yeah, uh, we're all quite busy, but we, we are going to keep trying to get the shows, uh, keep the shows going. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for... Uh, sorry we haven't engaged you in the chat that much today, but there has been a fair amount of, uh, of chat going on. Um, anything else I need to say? Right, yes... Um, Social media, obviously, get, in, get get liked and followed and everything else on all of our social media accounts. It is basically forward slash Resonance Arcade on everything, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, anyone. Um, <laughs> we will upload these episodes to YouTube, as we always do. Our YouTube contains everything on, and you can see all of the, um, all of the little mistakes that I make during the production and uh, all of the bugs that we have like the last Metal Gear Solid one unfortunately was ju juttering in video all the way through the game um, and I don't know why because it wasn't doing it on my screen or on the stream it's probably because I forgot to record it locally I don't know um, that's a shame because that was really smooth yeah it was really smooth but yeah I think it's probably just I don't know it only seemed to be the video part it didn't seem to be us juttering around so I don't know what was going on there uh and yeah, thanks to everybody who has uh, offered us to use their YouTube clips. <laughs> but we'll uh, we will again attribute everybody in the notes on uh, on YouTube when we upload. So yeah, apart from that, thank you very much, guys. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday if you don't come along for the game streams. And uh, take care. See you later. See you then. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.